Dear viewers, thank you for choosing Manhua Compilation Channel. Enjoy watching. The story begins on a beautiful summer day near the three-story library building. One man asked another that he was going to the library again, considering himself the smartest. The second one also turned to Alan, saying that he had already reread all the books and even asked to show a couple of secret techniques. To which the boy asked if they were tired. Vilmar said that Gabriel is asking him the impossible. After all, before them is a theorist who does not have even a drop of spiritual strength. And even if he learns something, he will not be able to use it. Then Gabriel asked if the main character was angry with him, to which Alan replied that he was not angry with them since they were right, and he began to say that it had been three years since he got here and realized the endurance of Lewis and his people. How boring they must be, mocking him like that every day. But once he was an errand boy, so it's all just flowers now. Lewis, in turn, immediately turned his head at him, and baring his teeth, cast a sideways evil look at him. He grabbed Alan by the chest and began to explain why he was constantly picking on him. He doesn't like that he is trying to pretend to be someone. He is annoyed that the guy looks calm, but he himself is scared. He asked him to kneel down and beg for mercy, so that one day he would receive a subscription from him. In response, the main character asked to be released. He continued to explain that he was the master of the Heavenly Sword Alliance. And if he insults him, he will fly out of there and no one will cover him. And after eight years of cultivation, he only reached the first stage of congealed blood. Deciding to disgrace him, to which the boy replied that he was not looking for his approval. At this time, the teacher approached them and explained that their rules prohibited the use of violence against fellow students. Then Lewis immediately let go of Alan, moving his hand to the side, and he began to explain to the teacher that he just wanted to exchange experience with him, but he did not expect that his fellow student would turn out to be so weak, and they did not cross the line of what was prohibited, to which the teacher told them to return to their place and do their training. Then, he approached the main character and asked him if he had thought about their conversation. To which the boy replied that not yet. Then, he continued to explain that Alan had been studying there for eight years and had only reached the first stage of frozen blood. He advised spending more time on this, explaining that he wishes him well, and offering to leave as soon as possible in order to have time to find another path in life. The main character thanked the teacher, insisting that he had his own plan and that he needs to go to the library, so he leaves. The teacher looked after him and thought that the guy was very stubborn. When the boy opened the door to the library, everyone around him immediately began to discuss him. That in eight years he has achieved nothing, and his appearance is like a village. Alan, entering the building, recalled that three years ago, he moved into this world and inherited part of the memories of the original hero. But when I woke up, I didn't get any benefits and the boy realized that the spiritual root of this body was not suitable for cultivation. He kept thinking about why he was there, if it was impossible to improve. But he wants to live there and eat for free, so he will pretend that he is trying very hard. And he took out a book that he hadn't read yet. He thought that this would not last for another three years. A spy must have a contact person. While the teacher was explaining the lesson, drawing with chalk on the blackboard, the main character grinned, realizing that although his level was low, he was the best in knowledge. And perhaps one day he will become a cultivation genius. Holding the book in his hands, the boy thought that on the first of next month, the four celestial beings of Tsangming would choose their direct disciples for the 135th time. This event occurs only once every three years. A hundred years later, the inner and outer schools had almost given up in this test. In addition, you need to destroy the seal of the nine heavens that Empress Willow created. It was necessary to walk 99 steps on the ladder of Jade Heaven, and this is an inhuman test. Alan realized that since he was such a failure in cultivation, there was nothing for him to catch there. A few hours later, it was already getting dark. The boy stretched tiredly, having read the entire book to the end. Then suddenly some bug notified that the anger system was activated. The main character could not understand what happened. Then he announced that the boy had completed the newcomer's hidden task, namely, to read all the works in the library. And the system was officially activated. She offered to piss off living beings, receiving anger points for this. 
This way, you can unlock system tasks and the necessary tools. Alan wondered for three whole years. That's such a long time. He still didn't fully understand what kind of system he got. Three days passed after that. The boy had thoughts in his head about killing Lewis. He began to hate him. He realized that he had many enemies. And his weak spiritual root is not a feature, but a punishment from someone who hates him. A notification has arrived from the system to accept or reject the first task. Alan wondered what if he rejected this task, to which the system threatened instant death. Then why does she offer a choice? The boy wondered. And the notification bug began to explain that instant death is not only for refusing a task, but also for its failure, to which the boy showed his class. The system countdown has begun, to which the boy thought that he definitely didn't like her since she was counting so quickly, after which he still decided not to reject the task, accepting it. The system set me to become a direct disciple of the four celestials of Tsongming, the boy exclaimed in horror. After all, he considered it impossible. In front of us is the Songming Shrine. Since the founding of this place by four immortals, none of the countless disciples had managed to overcome the 99 heavenly jade steps. No one was able to overcome the heavenly tribulation formation that Empress Willow created. But today, history will be rewritten. Meanwhile, the system conveyed to Alan that 23,333 anger points were needed to destroy the formation, and the process of destruction has already begun. It was like smoke in front of him. The boy extended his hand, ordering him to disperse. Some bright, fiery rays mixed with blue lightning illuminated the boy. Then it was as if fragile glass fell from the sky. It scattered around, and the guy in turn covered his head with his hands, waiting to see what would happen next. The main character stood still, completely illuminated by yellow rays. A huge yellow rainbow shone above him, stretching from the building on the cliff. This rainbow lightning, with its bright glow, hit him straight like a weapon. He was completely exhausted. And I wondered if he had passed the test. Meanwhile, the smoke was clearing. Alan wondered how he managed it. Moreover, only immortals can live in such a sacred place. And who are you? The main character asked when he saw a girl squatting in front of him. She looked at him as he lay prone on the floor. The main character wondered how she could be his future master being so young. To which the girl asked to answer her question first. She explained to Alan that he was now in the early stages of freezing blood. And he can't believe that he managed to walk up the jade staircase. She can't believe that he managed to break through the heavenly tribulation formation. To which the main character told the girl that she saw everything with her own eyes. And the system, in turn, warned the boy that he should watch what he says so that heavenly punishment in the form of sudden death would not fall on him. To which he replied that he would keep it a secret. The girl immediately thought that the latter was outdated, or the formation had weakened. The main character grinned a little and scratched the back of his head, and the girl told him that she would go to notify her sisters about what had happened. The boy noticed she was wearing very tight clothes. It lit up with a bright yellow-red flame, and like a rainbow ray of fire, they rushed off into the distance, as if they had dissolved. Alan, meanwhile, was thinking what he would answer if all four masters started asking him about how he managed it. His thoughts were interrupted by an alarm bug explaining about the frozen pond of immortals. This is an ancient source of divine power that stores the energy of the icy moons. It took a whole decade for one drop of this pond to form. Each such drop is a source of Yuan Qi, that is, hereditary energy, the system explained. The guy thought it was just great. He jumped into the water and the system began to notify. First stage ice blood, second stage ice blood, third stage ice blood, and the fiery girl has already arrived at her destination. Immediately, her sister asked her if she had time to see the main character, to which the fiery girl Ayla replied that she saw him and he turned out to be quite handsome. But just as she began to speak further, she suddenly stopped. Just what? asked her second sister, sitting on a large, beautiful throne to which the third sister with pink hair, ears, and a fluffy tail quipped that the eloquent fiery sister Ayla usually talks a lot, but now for some reason she stammers. And the fourth one, with lilac hair, simply remained sitting there, thinking. Ayla began to explain to the girls that the main character is a little strange. Even though he was only at the ice blood stage, he managed to climb up the jade ladder. He also miraculously managed to destroy the heavenly tribulation formation. How is this even possible? 
A girl with pink hair named Florence thought that he got here only due to luck, according to her sister Isla. She was waiting for the continuation of the story. The fire girl thought for a moment before continuing. Since Florence distracted her by tickling her with her bushy tail, she expressed her suspicion that the main character took advantage of the dilapidation of our creations. And then a girl with lilac hair intervened, distracted from her reading. She explained to Ayla that the heavenly tribulation formation was fine, to which the fiery girl began to make excuses that the boy simply behaved outrageously. To which the fourth sister sitting on the throne said that if the main character managed to pass the test, then he is already their student. Florence, hugging her sister Isla, admitted that she couldn't wait to meet that guy. And then a moment later, a loud indignant exclamation from the fiery girl was heard. She asked the main character where he had gone. After all, the girl told him to stay put. Alan, in turn, emerged from the water, stretching out to his full height. He was completely naked. Ayla cried indignantly, pointing her finger at him. How did he dare to leave the house? To which the main character joyfully greeted the girl and asked about her return, and whether other masters had arrived with her. Ayla kept protesting how dare he take a bath in the pond of immortals. Wow, anger points plus. Alan wondered how hot-tempered this girl was to get so angry. The boy came up with an idea, for which he already apologized in advance to his mentors. He asked what was wrong with him taking a swim. After all, he loves the feeling of cleanliness and takes a bath every day. And he not only takes a bath, but also wipes himself with a towel. Alan told the system that he was risking his life to anger his mentors. And indeed, anger points are plus. But his words apparently only affected the fiery girl. Meanwhile, the warning bug congratulated its owner, Alan, for angering the goddess of nine swords, Ayla. And he received 9,000 anger points for this. For his blatantly shameless behavior, the system will give him an additional god-level skill. Namely, catching a naked blade with bare hands, the ability to withstand any attack. Recharge time is seven days. Duration is a quarter of an hour. The guy thought, there are so many privileges, isn't this a mistake? To which the system suggested that he try it in order to understand everything. The main character asked the system if it was based on anger. Didn't it say that the reward depends on the level of anger? There are four celestials standing in front of him, so the bug is obliged to give him a couple more techniques like the divine power of the heavenly emperor, to which the system asked not to underestimate it. Isla, in turn, did not understand what he was muttering there, and she pointed her finger at him to immediately get out of there. The main character immediately obeyed the order of the mentor and climbed out of the water, being completely naked. The sisters immediately covered their mouths with their hands, realizing that he was quite big. Ayla immediately scolded Alan for jumping up like that, and she asked him to get dressed immediately, to which the boy, waving his arms, explained that she herself told him to get out of the water, and he, in turn, did not mind. The fiery girl became even angrier. Her eyes already lit up red. She expressed that she did not agree to train such a scoundrel like him, and completely illuminated by a bright, fiery flash, she grabbed her weapon and headed towards him. And the main character was already emerging little by little from the water, looking at what was happening. Ayla began to threaten him. Being angry, she flew closer. The sisters began to stop the girl. Alan wondered if the girl was really going to attack him. And the mentor was already spinning in the air, completely engulfed in her bright flame. She seemed to have become a fiery bird with a large, sharp beak and huge wings. And the main character decided to accept the bet and he chose his acquired skill of catching a naked blade with his bare hands. Something strange, very unusual, was happening. It was as if fire met the water in which Alan was located. The fiery girl did not understand how this was possible, and whether it was possible at all. The system reported catching a naked blade with bare hands. Six days, 23 hours, 59 minutes. The boy deftly caught the cold blade while holding it in his hands. The senior mentor, Monica, immediately turned to Ayla, giving her a stern, condemning look. She asked her sister to stop in time. The other two sisters also looked at what was happening with some anxiety and excitement. And the main character, holding the blade with his bare hands, turned to Ayla as a teacher, explaining that this was quite dangerous and she almost burned him alive. The girl replied that this could not be. Namely, how he, with his stage of icy blood, managed to stop her sword. 
The girl was called out by one of the sisters, namely the eldest Monica. She looked sternly at her sister. Isla, in turn, immediately obeyed and bowed her head to obey her. Meanwhile, the main character shouted something. The weapon in his hand seemed to be torn free. He reacted instantly and dived deeper into the water. So he was not visible at all, only his hair stuck out of the water. The boy's disappearance was noticed by the mentor's sisters, and the fiery girl guiltily lowered her eyes. The rest of the sisters stood nearby, also with sadness in their eyes. Monica asked how Ayla dared to disobey her. Anger points at that time were plus 100. She gave her the task of returning to the house and reading the sura about pure thoughts 500 times. The girl immediately obeyed, already looking up at her sister. She blushed a little with shame. The alarm bug congratulated its owner, Alan, because Empress Monica was furious. The Empress's rage affects all things. The system gives the owner an epic level reward, a divine statue of Qian and Kun. The Qian Yi Kun divine body is at the top of the list of divine sculptures. It increases the speed of improvement and knowledge a hundred times. The owner of this statue is destined to become the ruler of the three levels. Anger caused indirectly by the owner also counts. The system notified him. Three stages of development of conscious beings. Those with desires, those with sensuality, and those who do not know sensuality. The main character thought through to himself, wondering if this was possible. Meanwhile, Monica turned to Alan, explaining that since he managed to get here through the heavenly tribulation formation, from that moment on, he becomes their official disciple and the future guardian of the Kangming Shrine. And since this has all been decided, it will be announced to everyone else. And she added that the main character would go with them to the temple. Florence, in turn, promised the boy, being his teacher, to take care of Alan's upbringing. And confirming her next plan, she winked at him seductively with one eye. Raya, the sister with lilac hair, joined the conversation. And she promised to prepare a base that the main character needs to study. Ayla began to push the greenhouse so that it would not stand rooted to the spot, but would move a little faster, to which Alan waved his hand to his mentors, saying that he was already running as fast as he could. And here in front of us lies the Yunyang Pavilion, the place where guests of the Changming Shrine are received. The older sister Monica, sitting on a luxurious chair, ordered the fiery girl to start training the main character before the start of the official ceremony, to which she immediately began to be indignant why exactly she had such happiness? Anger points plus. Ayla continued to scream, explaining that she was no teacher. After all, no one, no matter how sister, should know about this. To which Monica explained that precisely because they don't get along, she asks them to study together in order to strengthen their character. She decided to do this. She would give Ayla a tour of the Kangming Shrine, and in return she would allow her to do the homework she assigned last time to which the fiery girl, burning with a temper, tried to calm down her anger and indignation and immediately, gritting her teeth, agreed to do as her older sister said. Rising from her chair, Ayla turned to the main character, calling him to follow her. The boy immediately agreed, obeying his master. And waving his hand, showing his obedience, he followed. Alan, in turn, walked behind and was happy that everything was going in the best possible way. She's so angry that she's jumping up and down, the boy noticed, and the girl with lilac hair named Raya thought again. And turning to her older sister, she said that Sister Ayla is simple and straightforward, that the fiery girl is no match for him. To which Monica replied that the Songming Sanctuary has almost turned into a desert over the years, and we need to take advantage of this opportunity to add vitality to this place. To which Raya, again thinking, agreed with her older sister's reasoning. Florence, holding her pipe with one hand, added with a slight smoke that their boy, Alan, has many secrets, and she thinks that an interesting future awaits him. The girl could no longer wait for such changes, and Monica looked at her thoughtfully. In front of us is a huge, bright building. From there, a light smoke came out through the open door from Florence's clogged pipe. The main character has a lot of questions. Did Ayla participate in the construction of the sanctuary? When did the master become one of the four immortals? Is she and the second master really a fox? Why is she ignoring him? To which the girl asked him to leave her alone. She turned away from the main character and pointed her thumb towards the steps, explaining that books were kept in the Changyun Pavilion. 
Alan thought that he had read all the books in the outside world, and it's time for him to stretch his brains with something new. And he turned to the master again, asking if he could go in there and look around. To which the fiery girl answered him that after she showed him around, she needed to sit down for her homework. And she doesn't have time to wait for him. The boy exclaimed when he saw the Tzu Temple. Isla, noticing this, explained that the Juxiao Temple is intended for meditation. Yuan Pavilion is the residence of his elder sister, the boy thought. He joked that he was too spoiled. And the joke is based on the fact that one of the translations of Yang is the masculine principle in ancient Chinese philosophy. The fiery mentor explained to Alan that the sisters consider him a harbinger of good luck, adding an exclamation at that moment that she does not think so, unlike the sisters. The system immediately warned the boy that it was watching him and so that he would not try to blurt out anything. To which the main character asked the master that they were not on a tour of the sanctuary, she answered in the affirmative and admitted that she was only interested in real students. And she won't be impressed by simple cheating during the exam. Will he be able to catch up with her in spiritual development? After all, she is at the level of divine purification, and he is only 54th in the world. Isla decided that he was taking her for a fool. The boy, in turn, scratched the back of his head and said that perhaps he really was lucky. The master must have tried to push the theory that he was cheating, but the girl had no evidence. To which the fiery girl laughed and made it clear that this was not so. The main character was a little indignant and asked if she really thought so. The girl replied that they had enough time to check it, and she really wants to see how long his lucky streak will last. Alan, raising his index finger up, warned his mentor that women who get angry a lot begin menopause earlier. Isla asked the boy what it was all about, to which he replied that this is an incurable disease, and women who suffer from it begin to experience depression, attacks of uncontrollable anger, and insomnia. Acne appears on the face and hair falls out. The beard is still growing, and the chest is becoming flat. Adding that the master is no longer so young, and combined with her character, he is afraid that it will be quite difficult for her to get married. Anger points plus. The fiery girl was simply burning with rage. She blushed, matching the color of her head. Anger points plus. She told the boy that when she becomes flat, then he will become a little shorter. And then she clenched her fist with all her might. The main character immediately stopped Ayla, reminding her of what her older sister said to control herself. Otherwise, she will get angry with the girl again. Anger points plus. She became a little calmer. And she agreed that he could use her older sister as an argument to restrain the girl. To which the boy replied that he was glad he was useful. And he continued to think. This crazy lady seems to care a lot about her own breast size. He managed to knock out as many as 5,000 anger points from her. Does she really care that much about her own figure? The boy thought again. It was like he was in that cloud. And then another extraordinary thought came into his head. It was as if he understood something, and he turned to the fiery girl again. To which Ayla sharply turned to him and asked what else he wanted from her. The main character, in turn, began to grin saying that it doesn't matter whether she has small breasts or not, because her butt is still flat. Now the anger points have jumped sharply. Plus 10, he had never seen her like this before. The girl's look not only changed, but the crown on her head began to glow as if with hellish fire. And then the mentor pulled out an object from the fiery portal, grasping the long handle. It was an elongated stick for punishing students. She took it in her hands and raised it above her head, the girl was preparing for an attack, threatening that now no one would save him. And then the night passed. We see the vast, bright pavilion of Xiaqi the next day. The fiery teacher opened the door with a powerful kick and began loudly and persistently to wake up her student. The girl put her hands on her hips, addressing him in a rude, strict tone, to which the main character asked the master to knock next time and not fly into his room in this way. He immediately pulled the blanket over himself as he was completely naked. Isla immediately turned away as the boy had already begun to take off the blanket. She left it at the end, saying that yesterday they examined only 50%, and she called him up to continue the tour. Alan obediently got out of bed and began to quickly get dressed. He did it hastily, 
and immediately ran out into the yard. He came out shouting to wait for him, since the girl mentor was already leaving. She was letting him know what it meant to make her angry, and the main character, in turn, asked the master if she was still angry with him because he said that she had small breasts. Isla immediately became seriously angry. Anger points plus. She pointed her finger at the guy and told her sister Raya that she couldn't teach him. To which she calmly replied that the boy was still very young and she should treat him condescendingly. Alan happily smiled and agreed with his mentor, scratching his chin. After all, he's still just a child. What kind of trouble could he cause? The boy thought to himself. The fiery girl thought in response that now we will see what kind of child you are, who you are. Wait a little, Ayla continued to whisper, smiling maliciously and maliciously. Raya instructed her sister, insisting that she must be patient, not forgetting what her elder sister said yesterday, to which she had to answer positively, and the mentor in turn gave the main character advice not to forget that teachers should be treated with respect. After which she, with all seriousness and severity, asked Alan if he had heard her. The boy blushed a little as if he really was a small child, and his mother scolded him, putting pressure on his conscience. After which Raya took the boy by the shoulder, saying that it seems that Isla did not have time to give him a full tour. And she asked the boy to let her show him everything in this huge room herself. The fiery girl looked down guiltily and closed her eyes for a second. And the main character cast a disapproving glance at her and smiled slightly. He suggested that Ayla learn from her sister how to behave in society, to which the master answered him that she was sorry that it fell to her to become Alan's master, and she continued that she had to remind him of something. Now the girl closed her eyes and laughed maliciously. She said that the third sister is not the one he should provoke, that this is not the reason. Then the main character asked the girl to explain to him what the reason was then. Anger points plus. The boy calculated his share of anger. The mentor told him that she would not tell him that she was still angry with him, and the alarm bug congratulated its owner on the fact that he became angry for the first time. This time, there will be no punishment. And the system advised him to be careful, because in those moments when he gets angry, the number of anger points decreases, to which Alan became even more angry at such a ridiculous rule. Raya led the main character further, showing the surroundings. To begin with, I decided to look into one interesting place. Namely, the girl really wanted to eat. She clutched her stomach with her hand. In front of them was the entrance to the building with a fireworks sign, which translated as hot food cooked over a fire. The boy turned to the master, wondering if fireworks were being launched in this room, to which the mentor replied that this place makes you feel alive. And then Ayla intervened in the conversation, explaining that he still didn't get something. The boy became interested in what exactly after all, the fiery girl behaved quite mysteriously, making it clear that he still did not understand what kind of exam they were talking about before. The main character wondered. He instantly wondered what the fire girl was really trying to tell him. She squatted down and asked the boy to prepare something for them to eat. To which Alan crossed his arms over his chest and asked if immortals also need food. Raya replied that actually no, but sometimes I really want to rub my tummy. The fiery girl again quipped that it couldn't be explained so easily to a simple person like him. She said that her older sister loves stewed chicken with jingo. The second sister loves fried chicken with potatoes. And she loves baked chicken. And the fourth sister loves steamed chicken with sauce. Isla said that previously the third sister was responsible for cooking, but since she has other things to do, this responsibility will henceforth be on him. The main character scratched his cheek and asked if they loved chicken so much. The fiery girl entered the room with the bird and deftly caught one of the curts by the throat. Having asked the boy what it was, he stood rooted to the spot. It's time to start cooking. And she handed the live chicken to the stunned Alan. He just didn't expect the cooking to fall on him. But he immediately took the chicken into his own hands, thinking that he is definitely good at this. The boy immediately smiled slyly his eyes lit up somehow strangely, as if with excitement. Raya replied that she really hoped so. And my sister threatened that if they didn't like it, then just imagine what they would do to him. And then she crossed her arms over her chest, smiling sarcastically. The main character immediately accepted this challenge. And taking the frightened chicken by the throat, he showed class. 
explaining to the chicken that sooner or later she would have died anyway. He wished her to break her circle of reincarnation as soon as possible. Alan immediately grabbed the huge, shiny-edged cleaver, deciding that it was time to cook the chicken. And then he spun around, spun around like a great chef in a large, spacious kitchen. He decided that he was the best in this business. And so, throwing dishes from hand to hand, the main character invited all his mentors to a large, round table. They were very surprised, especially the most emotional fiery girl. How deftly and skillfully the boy laid out dishes full of food on the table in front of them. After which, as soon as he finished setting the table, he wished the mentors a bon appetit. The girls opened the dishes, removing the lids from them. Everything there was very beautiful and expertly prepared, and some extraordinary golden light flowed from each dish. Florence covered her mouth with her hand, surprised by this innovation, and the boy continued to invite his mentors to taste his creation. Elder sister Monica gave the command to everyone else to take their chopsticks and start eating. Everyone immediately fell for the ordered dishes. How delicious everything looked! The food just left them in their mouths, and now the girls have already filled their bellies. They completely emptied the dishes that were full of food and added their chopsticks. Older sister Monica was the first to give her assessment, having said that I haven't eaten anything like this for a long time. She really liked the dish prepared by the main character. Florence, in turn, explained that this aroma, this pleasant heat, caressed her face like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Raya closed her eyes and said that with each piece, the spiritual power in her body became stronger and stronger as if she was about to make some kind of breakthrough. And the fiery girl admitted that this is a real endless feeling of happiness. Even though she was not friends with Alan, she agreed with her sisters. The older sister asked the boy how he was able to cook all four dishes, to which Alan began to explain to Monica that in order to emphasize the umami taste inherent in the chicken, he had to give her a little massage to make the meat more tender. This way, after adding seasonings and garnishes, the chicken can retain its unique taste without getting lost under a bunch of additives. Florence, in turn, told the boy that he made her very happy, and she ran her finger along his chin. The main character, rejoicing that he pleased the mentors, turned to Ayla and asked if he was qualified enough, to which the girl told him to talk less and sit down to eat, so that after eating, he returns to his room and starts practicing. Alan was in the process of being invited. Having eaten his fill, the boy, following the instructions of his mentor, went to his chambers. He concluded that based on the information he had, he could get points by annoying others, but he couldn't get angry himself or those points would be lost. The boy wondered what he should do in this case. Trying to catch Zen and not think about anything? Then, he glanced at the system, wondering when he would be able to unlock these skills. Then, he asked the alarm bug where they had gone to which the system explained that basic skills can be unlocked in the store. The boy realized that he could buy something, and he asked if there were objects from his world, like atomic bombs there, to which the alarm bug replied to the owner that he had suddenly planned this. He began to reason. The rifle can be both accurate and fast. Curious what is stronger, weapons or magic? He asked if the system had such items, to which the system responded positively explaining that something simple would cost him cheap, but a weapon of mass destruction, like an atomic bomb, will cost an astronomical number of points. He kept thinking whose power would be greater, the power of an atomic bomb or the power of a great master, to which the system could not give an exact answer, explaining that at the moment there are no records of such a comparison in the database. And the owner can resend the request in the future. Teacher Monica suddenly crept up behind her, and she asked Alan what atomic bomb he was talking about. The main character immediately asked the girl again, as if not understanding what she was asking him about. The mentor, in turn, did not ask what he meant by insisting on this. The boy, sitting in the lotus position, suddenly fell onto his back point, leaning his hands on the floor. He thought that it seemed to him that his older sister did too, but his thought was suddenly interrupted. Monica explained to him that before dinner, she planned to give him a talisman, but dinner changed her plans a little, and the talisman is direct proof that he is their student, and at a critical moment, he will definitely protect him. Alan immediately exhaled, because it seemed he had thought of something unnecessary. How was this even possible? He immediately thanked the master, and he began to look at his wonderful gift. 
Monica quietly said that the atomic bomb could not compare with her in strength. If the opportunity arises, she will demonstrate this to him so that the boy can see it for himself. But for this, he will have to work hard, after which the senior mentor left the main character to rest. After all, he probably can't wait to master new knowledge. And the girl went to meditate, leaving Alan alone, alone with his thoughts. The boy was looking at his talisman so carefully that he didn't notice how Monica came out. She probably disappeared. He began to remember the words that he heard out of the corner of his ear. She said that the atomic bomb is weaker than it. And he can verify this personally. He wondered what the senior mentor was hinting at. Maybe she just doesn't know what an atomic bomb is. And then the next day came. The main character, approaching a huge building, thought that this was the library that he was told about yesterday. The pavilion of some kind of cloud, which they seemed to tell him about yesterday. This is how the boy listened inattentively to his mentors. Alan was angry with Ayla, making the girl a useless guide. And the fiery girl, with her hands on her hips, told her sister that she had come up with several phrases that would anger Alan to death. To which Raya replied that she thought that she would not live to see the end of the battle and suggested that she drink a cup of tea in order to clear her mind. And the boy, entering the library building, thought that for a long time he had dreamed of being in the library of the Tsangming Shrine. And then his gaze fell on something unusual. He immediately stopped, frozen in place, as if rooted to the spot. Some bright light shone ahead, and above it a pink hemisphere, similar to Florence's fluffy tail. Here the main character screamed in surprise. His torso was wrapped around this big fluffy tail. He dragged him upstairs somewhere and threw him roughly onto the floor. And the teacher girl, sitting in the lotus position, asked him if he was looking for her. Alan, lying on the floor, rested his elbow on the shiny parquet. And smiling, he asked the master what she was doing here. The girl turned to the boy. It seemed to her that he had a strange tone of voice, as if the main character was disappointed in something. She looked at him with a strange, mysterious look, as if she was planning something interesting, to which the boy began to explain that he simply came here to find a couple of books. Apparently he got lost yesterday, so he didn't get here. But it's actually very nice and cozy here, so his visit here was planned. She continued to wonder why he liked studying so much. She chuckled a little. It seemed to the girl that something was about to happen. She crawled up to the main character and raising her index finger to his lips, asked why he was trying to escape. Does he really think his mentor is so ugly that maybe she scares him? To which Alan replied that on the contrary, the master is like a gracefully soaring swan, alarmed by the sun. She is like the most beautiful dragon, sparkling with the misty beauty of autumn sitting on a throne. That her face is beautiful, like a lotus. With one word she can conquer a city, and with two words, she can conquer an entire country. Florence was seduced by these wonderful compliments. She seemed to melt before the boy's eloquence, and the main character noticed a fluffy soft tail that appeared on his mentor. Alan also began to slowly melt, like a small cold piece of ice in the hot summer sun. The girl explained that this happens when her mood rises. She just didn't think his subtle praise would make her happy. In exchange for this, she decided to give him something, the main character immediately became inspired. His eyes instantly lit up, and he impatiently asked what exactly the mentor wanted to give him. Florence began to explain that all these elixirs around were created by her. Some can strengthen the body and fill it with energy, others can prolong life, and some can even help with breakthroughs. And as his teacher, the girl can give him any of them, to which Alan decided to at least come up with a poem as a sign of gratitude. He thought that the Chinese poet Li Bo, from the Bo dynasty, was not hidden here anywhere. He began to read poetry. Your face is a flower, and your dress is a cloud, washed with dew, the beauty of a flower. On Jasper Peak, Jade Balcony, the moon is rushing towards you from afar. He finished the stanza with a clean and even melody of Li Bo. Having concluded that he was very successful in quoting the poet's poems, the teacher answered the boy that this poem was very beautiful, to which the main character told the girl that the poem may be beautiful, but it cannot be compared with her. Florence thought that he decided to tease her. She wrapped her big fluffy tail around him. The boy wondered what she was doing. The mentor told Alan that he was too active. 
looks like he needs to be taught how to address his teachers with respect. To which the boy replied that the master should first give him the promised reward. Then he would definitely master the information. Florence looked at him with a very sly look, grinning a little. She agreed with the boy, and then she loosened her grip, releasing Alan from the strong, suffocating embrace with her fluffy, strong tail. And hugging the boy as a sign of gratitude, she promised to reward him right away because the girl keeps her word. She pointed her finger at one purple jar and gave the boy permission to take it if he wanted. The main character thanked the mentor, and she, in turn, asked him why he wanted to study transformation techniques. She suggested that he follow his teacher and not study illusions. Alan, on the contrary, became interested in the illusion of the nine-tailed fox. The boy immediately agreed, ready to sacrifice even sleep for the sake of such studies. Isla suddenly approached them and immediately asked what she was doing here. She kept her hands on her hips as she asked with utmost sternness. And the fiery girl began to show the boy her strength, to which he asked, stuttering, what she was doing with him. Then the sister turned to Florence, why he looked like he was crazy. Did she really use her techniques on him? To which the sister answered her very vaguely. She explained to her sister that she was teaching the main character techniques, and she invited Ayla to join. She was surprised that the fiery girl came so quickly and unexpectedly, and I decided that something had happened. The sister was afraid that Alan's fragile psyche could not stand it, and she replied that the older sister asked her to give him an extraordinary tour. The fiery girl hit the boy on the back with all her might, thus inviting him to follow her. The boy howled in pain, stroking his poor lower back. He realized his weakness and blamed himself for falling into the trap of the master's illusions. He felt a little sorry that, having become stronger, he could not experience this. Florence remained sitting with her back in the lotus position, and the fiery mentor stood offendedly with her arms crossed over her chest. Then the alarm bug turned to Alan, explaining that Ayla is the heiress of the Fox Clan, one of the great clans of ancient Qingxu. In terms of strength, this clan ranks first among the three great clans. The fiery mentor asked the boy what he saw in the illusion, to which the main character replied that he didn't see anything like that, and why did she interrupt him? After which the guy approached Florence. He asked his master to give him some of his time in the future, to which the girl answered him that she would definitely, with great pleasure, teach the boy everything she knew. And politely, with all due respect, he bowed in front of the mentor and said goodbye to her, immediately leaving the room. Leaving the building, he admitted to the fiery mentor that he was able to calmly grab the red bottle, but he couldn't handle the purple one. He was wondering what kind of elixir was stored in the day, and so they left the huge library room for today. The main character admitted that he was still a little sorry. Ayla, in turn, became angry again, asking him not to dwell on it. The fiery girl, already in another room, told Alan that yesterday's chicken was indeed very tasty. The boy concluded that the master decided to improve her relationship with him. And placing his hands on his hips, he smiled sweetly. The girl began to cry, thinking about why she needed all this. After all, she decided to behave as a teacher should, and not argue with the main character over all sorts of little things. Isla immediately asked why he was looking at her like that, to which the boy replied that he couldn't wait to fight back. He replied that it was just like that. She's behaving too strangely. She probably decided to switch places with him, after which Alan asked the master to show him the way to another library. The girl looked at him very surprised. The fiery girl told the main character that he was behaving somehow strangely. Maybe he's up to something. To which the boy grinned and said that he was just waiting for her to twist her leg. He explained that all he wanted was to go to the library, and he thinks she better lead the way. Moreover, the mentor said that she was ready to teach him. He couldn't wait for it anymore. Anger points plus. The mentor began to get seriously angry again. She seemed to be divided, and a bright, burning fire shone in her eyes. She asked him, starting to shout, if she had not already shown him these surroundings, and if he is not even able to remember the way, how does he plan to learn from them? To which Alan replied that he was really stupid, and he counts on the understanding of his mentors. An army does not have unchanging power, water does not have an unchanging form, and he, as the king of jungle, 
will not just test the girl's patience. Isla said that they approached the library. But she hastens to remind him that not everyone can read the books that he will find in this building. To which the boy replied that he should not be underestimated. Anger points plus. Alan smiled sarcastically and said that the stupid chick had already arrived. And now they have already approached the main door. The main character noticed that no one had lubricated the hinges of this door for a long time, as it creaked very much. The fiery girl noticed a little sister in the room, and on the third page, Raya was sitting on a chair, crossing her legs. As usual, she was doing her favorite thing, namely reading a book. Alan immediately greeted his mentor, greeting her with a sweet smile. To which the girl didn't even react. She also continued to read the book carefully. The main character was very surprised. He continued to look at the girl and expected an answer from her, but no answer came. In turn, Ayla laughed standing next to him, explaining to the boy that when her sister concentrates on something, she pays little attention to anything. And then she offered to follow her. Although she doesn't go there often, she knows this place like the back of her hand. To which the boy said that he did not believe her. The fiery girl walked forward, and the main character suddenly turned his head somewhere. At this time, Ayla had already reached out with her hand to the top shelf, saying that she definitely remembered that the book she needed was on this shelf. And the guy, in turn, answered her that he was a deputy, or that she spent a whole half hour looking for this book. And she said that she knew this place well. The girl became very angry again, and she promised that he would now get what he deserved. Forewarned is forearmed, Alan laughed in response, surprised that the fiery girl knew how to use idioms. After which Ayla continued to look for some book, wondering why she couldn't find it. After all, she remembers exactly what she put in exactly that place, to which the boy wondered if this was the book she was looking for. And he picked up a textbook from the floor. On the cover it was written, Basic Sword Technique, Nine Heavenly, Heavenly Fires. The girl continued to look for the book, claiming that she remembered exactly where the book was. Alan, in turn, holding the textbook in his hand, turned to the master, supposedly with tears in his eyes. Because the book is just lying on the ground, then suddenly Raya approached him from behind, and she said that he should not read this book. The boy was surprised, and wondering why, he pressed this book to himself, to which the girl replied that she was too busy reading a book, so she didn't notice him and the book he was holding in his hands began to explain. As Ayla asked from a high shelf if the third sister had come, she looked down at them, and then she descended to them with lightning speed. She exclaimed joyfully that her sister had arrived just in time, and asked if she had not seen her book. After all, she remembers exactly that she put it on a certain shelf, pointing a finger in that direction, to which Raya asked if it was her book about sword techniques. Ayla replied that yes, it really was her, and the third sister gave a hint that perhaps someone had taken this very book. Here the main character, turning to the mentors, decided to confess but seeing that they were continuing the conversation, he fell silent. Only he blushed a little, and streams of sweat ran down his cheeks. The boy hid the book in his bosom. Raya asked the fiery girl what they were doing here, to which Ayla explained that Alan was looking for some literature, and she brought him here. Meanwhile, the guy was digging in his bosom, straightening a book that had slipped to the side. Raya turned to the main character and asked what book he needed. Maybe scripture or some practices. To which the boy replied, scratching the back of his head, that it was true he was looking for a couple of books to improve his level. The girl mentor holding her chin thought, since in order to increase her level, she thought about something for a long time. Then she stood up and made a gesture with her hand, raising it up. The hand glowed like a big blue star. The boy watched her with great interest. After all, her hand and she herself glowed with blue bright rays. And then, Raya let go of her hand, becoming calm again as before. And she instructed the boy to first familiarize himself with this information. She placed a whole stack of fat big students in his arms. To which the main character looked in surprise and thanked the mentor. Raya told Alan that if he had any questions, he could feel free to ask her. The guy replied that he would humbly study, so as not to let his wise master down under any circumstances. Then, the fiery teacher abruptly took him by the hand and pulled him along, to which the main character reminded the girl that he was going to read a book. And if she has something to do, let her leave it here in the library. 
and the fiery girl in turn, raising her hand as if asking for permission, turned to her sister, warning that she was taking the boy. To which Raya replied to the girl that she should work more diligently and watch her spelling. She was just looking through her book, and the main character was already going down the steps leaving the library building with his fiery mentor. He asked his master if it was because of a typo that she was ruining his plans. To which the girl replied that he simply did not catch the subtext of her words. And my sister wanted them to leave her alone. Isla explained that if they had stayed there, her sister would have turned him into an ice sculpture. And don't let her ask how she knows this. To which the boy thought that she was exaggerating, and the fiery girl suggested that if he didn't believe her, he should see for himself. After all, Raya can freeze him and won't even pay attention, because she will be concentrated on her books, and then she will not save him. Here it seemed to the main character that the girl really wasn't lying. After all, she spoke quite seriously. Ayla continued to explain that the third sister should not be angered. She had already warned him about this. Especially if she is busy with something. And if Alan dares to tell her about the typos, Isla will personally fry it until it is golden brown on both sides. After which, she will season it with caraway seeds and throw the monsters into the forest. The boy laughed and told the master that if she wanted him to keep this secret a secret, then she would have to pay for it. Otherwise, her secret might secretly spread throughout the sanctuary, and it will be very awkward. Anger points plus. She agreed but warned the guy that with this phrase he signed his own death warrant. The fiery girl was furious like a lioness. A red flame glowed behind her. The system, in turn, congratulated the owner. He managed to anger Ayla several times in a short period of time, for which he will receive special anger points. In addition, he opened a task system. The current task is to pass the internal test. The reward is a heavenly rank skill or an artifact of your choice. What kind of punishment was the boy thinking? And the girl continued to be angry that he didn't even hear what she told him. The alarm bug explained to him that in order to get the answer to this question, he needed to stay with him. So nothing is clear. The main character thought that although he had received several gift sets, these teases from the system were completely incomprehensible. Ayla couldn't reach the guy. He simply didn't hear her. Here the bug made itself known. He greeted the owner, explaining that he would help him take the position of general director and marry a wealthy beauty, promising to take him to the pinnacle of life. The main character was surprised because he now has a coach. He asked to see the user manual. The boy remembered that the system began to tease him as soon as he activated it. He didn't remember her telling him anything about glasses. He had to learn everything on his own through trial and error. The owner has zero points accumulated. Access to system activation is temporarily unavailable. Because of this, he, the main character Alan, a time traveler, was forced to endure the ridicule of others. The system reminded the owner that there was only one month left before the internal test, and he never achieved the mandatory requirements for admission to it. To which the boy replied that he understood this. Isla, in turn, approached the main character, noting that explaining something to him was tantamount to talking to a wall. Alan couldn't stop thinking about the fact that he urgently needed to figure out how to get to the test. Could it be that the system is deliberately trying to set him up? The fiery girl asked the boy why he was looking at her like that. It's like the first time. The guy started to explain something to the mentor, but then he stopped and looked around. He wondered why in two days there was no one else around. And in general, he had not met anyone in this territory, to which Ayla asked why he was looking around. And she pointed to the side. The boy thought that if he spent all his practice here, he would not be able to get enough anger points. And he decided that he simply had to find a way to get out of here. And the fiery girl still couldn't understand why he was ignoring her like that. To which he explained that he was just thinking a lot, and something had just dawned on him. The mentor also wondered what he was talking about. He became somehow too strange and mysterious, and he continued to say, folding his hands one on top of the other on his chest, that only a girl could force him to renew his sword, deciding that the strategy with the master was really excellent. After all, if you make her angry once, she turns into a real generator of anger. Anger points plus 100, plus 200, plus. 
That's how the main character noticed and realized that this fiery girl is a real storehouse of anger points. She turned to Alan, pointing her finger at him, having figured out what prevents him from practicing, to which the boy replied that it simply seemed to him that at her age she did not have enough qualifications. And he gave her a very sly look. This is what the boy needed. He clenched his fists with joy. After all, his plan worked. The girl immediately took out her weapon, threatening to cut the main character into pieces if he did anything like that again. Anger points plus 200 plus 300 plus. Alan, in turn, did not let up, saying that the girl did not know how to communicate with guys. And she does this to hide her awkwardness. The system immediately congratulated the boy for successfully angering Ayla again. And for this, he is entitled to a gift, Jillin of the first rank. This is what automatically increases your military skill. Alan was overjoyed. And I decided that this was a thing. That he simply had to continue in the same spirit. And deciding to anger the fiery mentor again, he explained to her that she really reads people like an open book. Surely she decided to accompany him for a reason. In fact, the girl just longs for love. He understands this and promises to keep her secret a secret. Anger points plus 100 plus 100, plus. Then Ayla promised the main character that if he was so eager to practice, she, as his master, would share with him the unique tactics of practicing the red-hot sword. Ayla's unique tempered sword technique, the girl was very serious. Noticing this, Alan covered himself with his hands and suggested that the master first make a bet. The boy covered himself with his hands and asked her to stop. After all, she was already approaching to attack the main character. Alan dodged as quickly as he could, noticing that it was very close to him. The fiery mentor immediately stopped holding her weapon. And putting her hands on her hips, she asked what kind of bet. And the boy thought that in a month he needed to pass an internal test. And maybe he should bet whether he will pass it or not. And his main goal is to get down from this mountain and manage to annoy the simpletons there. Isla explained to him that he could not even imagine what level he would have to reach in order to even be allowed to take the test. After all, this time he was simply lucky to use the source of immortality and increase his level. Even the strongest of them would need at least three months to make such a big leap. She considered that it was not ambition that spoke in him, but ordinary stupidity. He took the master weakly, because she was simply afraid to argue with him. And putting his hands on his hips, he stared at his mentor. She laughed in response, assuring that she had nothing to fear from the argument, which she would definitely win. But she is very interested in what exactly the main character is going to argue about. And if she doesn't like it, she will certainly use her sharp sword. He suggested to Ayla that if she failed the test, she would leave the sanctuary. To which the girl replied that many people were eager to take his place. But is he really ready to do this? The boy, raising his finger up as a sign of approval, of course agreed. Then, the mentor continued that since he had such a high opinion of himself, she would not dissuade him. But what will happen if he does pass the test? The girl wondered where he got so much confidence from. Then he began to say what would happen if he won the argument. Ayla immediately hurried him because she was very curious. Then, coming up behind the girl, he whispered quietly in her ear that then she would marry him. The teacher jumped at this unexpected turn. And I wondered what he meant. To which Alan laughed, crossing his arms over his chest, provoking the girl, pushing her to believe that she was simply afraid. The teacher thought that he had definitely lost his tiny brain. After all, the test is only a month away, and he is not one step closer to raising his level and gaining the right to participate in it. Therefore, the girl immediately agreed, after which the main character asked the master for a small request. The girl, holding her hands on her sides, asked what kind of request this was. He asked if he could leave the sanctuary for a while. After which Ayla asked why he did this, maybe something happened? The ladder of sorrow is not something you can use at your own discretion. Didn't he lose most of his strength when he came up here? To which Alan asked the fiery girl to throw him there if she could. He explained this by saying that he simply did not have enough time for such a movement. And if she refuses him, the boy will be forced to kiss his future wife. The fiery girl became extremely angry again. She glowed with intense heat, blushing at these words, and she threatened not to leave a single piece of the boy. 
She turned around and kicked the main character in the back. And then Ayla engulfed him in flames and carried him down with lightning speed. He didn't even have time to explain that he wasn't going there right now. And she threatened the girl that he would definitely not be able to get along with her. Meanwhile, everyone was minding their own business. The elder sister was putting her precious things on the shelf. And somewhere below, a group of people watched the light appear high in the sky. Something was approaching the ground with lightning speed. The main character, enveloped in a bright flame of fire, flew down very quickly. One boy asked another, watching what was happening, if he knew at least one technique in which you can fall from heaven. To which the second answered, perhaps some long-forgotten one. Alan, in turn, flying closer and closer to the ground, warned the guys to be careful. After all, he was flying straight in their direction. There was a powerful blow like an explosion. Clouds of smoke and dust scattered around. People barely had time to run away. And then, from the rubble of stones and thick smoke, the hand of the protagonist came out. Climbing out of the hole that he had made with his body, the boy thought that the master was really very angry with him. How painful it was for him. And his enemies were already waiting for him below, confidently crossing their arms over their chests. They approached and asked if this was their loser, Alan. It was an old friend of his who was bullying him, a guy named Lewis. He grinned and asked the main character what his destiny was here. Wasn't he going to the sanctuary to destroy the formation? To which Alan, lying on the asphalt, told the guy that he still couldn't keep up with him. Previously, he and his mongrels mocked him for days on end, but now, as he noticed, his ardor subsided. They probably couldn't climb the heavenly steps. Anger points plus. The guy immediately got angry. One wonders how a person who was kicked out of the sanctuary has the audacity to say such things. To which the boy explained that the fact that he was kicked out and the fact that Lewis couldn't even get there are two completely different things. He and his mutts should know that he came down here because he wanted to. And he advises him to devote more time to training in his free time. After all, with his level of development, he will not even be able to apply for an internal test. The system notified that the owner had accumulated 100,000 anger points. And now a store has opened for him. Alan joked that he would like a bottle of cola. And he was about to leave when Lewis stopped him by the shoulder, explaining that he did not allow him to leave. The system still deducted 5,000 points for a bottle of cola, warning that the cola will be destroyed after consumption to which the boy was very surprised how it could cost so much, as much as 5,000 points. The system notified that a large number of points are required to purchase Crossworld inventory, which made him even more angry as to why she didn't tell him about this earlier. Alan pulled Lewis's hand away, asking him to get out of the way and not irritate him. He was still angry about the can of cola, which only contained 200 milliliters, and Lewis in turn became very angry wondering how this loser dared to be so insolent to him. He exclaimed in a loud voice, warning that in this case, he would teach him a lesson so that the main character would know how to behave. He immediately rushed at the boy, clenching his strong fist, and threatening him with death, he attacked him. Alan reacted very quickly, as if lightning grabbed his fist in one sharp movement, stopping the blow. He clenched his opponent's fist with all his strength while holding it in his hand. Sparks flew all around, the main character began to drink the magic drink with his second hand, which he purchased for 5,000 points. And then he crushed the empty jar, remembering how much he paid for it. But the boy was happy, because the water was really tasty. He reassured himself that in principle, some measly 5,000 was not a pity. Moreover, he heard somewhere that what is lost always comes back. Alan, illuminated by a blue glow, challenged Lewis to a fight. Bright rays of lightning emanated from him, to which the guy covered himself with his hand, wondering how this was even possible, how the main character managed to get to the seventh level. After all, when he, pathetic trash, went to the sanctuary, he only had the first one. In response to what was said, the boy laughed a little, and clearing his throat, he rubbed his shoulder with his hand, supposedly wiping away the dust from Lewis's hand. Everyone around was surprised how this could happen, Perhaps the great masters rewarded him. Exclamations were heard around him. But the guy continued his version that even with this level, he was no good for anything, which is why he was kicked out. Lewis laughed and said that he understood everything, 
and the strength of the main character is compensation for the test. They simply don't need such an untalented piece of garbage. The guy decided that Alan was just lucky. And even though his level is lower than that of the boy, he is still the master of the Heavenly Sword Alliance. And the reason why their alliance has stood against its enemies for centuries is a special elixir that can improve its level of development by as many as three steps in a short period of time. And he will force the main character to beg for mercy on his knees. Alan coughed in response, making it clear that he didn't care where Lewis was from just so that he wouldn't talk nonsense. And the boy was already quite nervous, egged on by the enemy's jokes. He smiled sarcastically, thinking that this technique would not survive his enemy. In turn, Lewis, taking something out of his bosom, explained to the boy that he was not the only one who had elixirs. And then he pulled out a bottle. Apparently, he really had an elixir of strength. The bottle must have been full, because when the guy opened it, sparks and a couple of drops of liquid flew out of it. Lewis immediately defiantly threw the cap aside and drained the contents of the bottle. The main character looked at this in surprise. He could not understand whether his opponent was taking doping. And then he really changed. His muscles became tenser. He was all lit up like a yellow flame. Being engulfed in bright lightning, Alan helped his eyes out wondering where the judge was to file a complaint for doping during the fight. The boy could still joke during dangerous moments. And Lewis seemed to have grown into hard, strong muscles. He clenched his fists, preparing to fight. In turn, the main character noticed that Lewis was ahead of his development by two whole steps. What shamelessness after all. The enemy began to approach him, threatening him with death. A bright, fiery train stretched next to him. Alan did not plan to accept this battle now. He didn't want to fight now, stretching his hand forward, stopping the guy. And the mentor sisters upstairs went about their business, not imagining what was happening to their student on Earth. The angry enemy has already rushed towards him, clenching his strong, doping-filled fists. The main character realized that the enemy would definitely not leave him behind until he finished him off and he took a self-defense stance. The system notified the owner about one idea. Namely, exchange 5,000 points for 50 seconds of an invulnerable golden body, to which the boy replied that she should be ashamed to offer to spend that kind of money again. And the enunciator bug threatened Alan to watch his words. Lewis, meanwhile, was already very close, angry that the guy was distracted when he ran towards him to attack. He promised to turn the main character into mincemeat, to which the boy agreed, and even asked him to hurry up. Alan immediately agreed to the system's proposal and completed the purchase of the invulnerable golden body. He also seemed to look much more powerful, and his muscles were a little stronger, and the body glowed with golden threads. The boy's invulnerable golden body was simply beautiful. He stood in front of the enemy without any fear in his eyes, and they didn't even move when a powerful blow was already flying towards his face. He invited his opponent to tickle his back with this blow. Lewis almost reached his face when his hand was enveloped in some kind of pink, bright spiral, like death from delicate pink leaves. The main character remained standing without moving, only the leaves falling on his loose hair. On Lewis's fist, there was a haze of pink trail and a few delicate leaves, as if from a blossoming flower. It was Florence. She descended from the sky, like a fairy who came to the aid of the main character. And she explained to Alan that, according to the commandments of their sanctuary, adherents of different clans are forbidden to fight among themselves. She looked at the boy menacingly, indicating that he had probably forgotten about this fact, to which the main character guiltily raised his eyes, looking at the girl mentor. He told her that the girl had come to his aid just in time, but he immediately regretted his 5,000 points. Florence already had one foot on his shoulder, and Lewis hovered in flight, near the boy's face. Having flown closer to him, the girl warned that he should not behave like that on sacred ground. And for this, there is a small punishment. She looked very sternly at the guy, frightened by such a surprise. Lewis was already lying on the ground, looking at the girl with great surprise, and she waved her hand in his direction. Then the guy seemed to fly into the air again. It was as if he were surrounded by blue stars. And in front of the main character, there was only a reflection of blue small stars. The boy thought about how brave little Lewis was. After all, he knew how dangerous the seemingly gentle and sweet mentor Florence was. She, in turn, crept up to Alan and asked if he was afraid to die. 
and ran a finger with a long, sharp nail along his cheek, to which he explained that he was allegedly playing the role of a poor fellow who was expelled from the sanctuary. And because of her, his plan failed. They continued talking. While behind them, a group of warriors, students, were vigorously discussing what was happening. Florence, approaching the main character closer, immediately jumped away from him again, sighing gently. She told the boy that his heart was breaking into pieces. And then she sat down on the bare floor, exposing her legs. Alan was very surprised how the girl mentor was able to transform so quickly in one second. The men around, raising their weapons, were indignant. How dare the main character bring their beautiful Florence to tears? What a shameless guy he is. After all, the girl saved him, and he spat in her soul. The boy thought that it had a good effect, but wasn't it too much? And the girl, in turn, winked at him, wondering if she managed it. Alan asked in response if the girl remained the same. To which she replied that she was now quite sweet and seductive. What was wrong with that? If he wanted, she could help with something else. The main character asked her to stop, and raising his hand to his head, he closed his eyes. Beads of sweat ran down his face. The boy seemed a little tired. Florence asked again if this was really enough, and she asked me to help her get up from the floor. Alan began to convince his mentor that he could handle the rest himself. And holding out his hand to her, he helped her up. Then the girl suddenly clung to his chest as if she was afraid of something. To which the guy asked what was wrong with her. And the men standing opposite them already had a lot of anger points. They pointed their fingers in their direction and shouted something rudely, clearly indignant. She explained to the main character that she had not yet finished her performance and running away from the boy, she began to cover her body with her hands. She screamed loudly for him not to do this. Alan began to get seriously angry. He began to sweat even more. After all, an angry group of people were already preparing to rush at him. They shouted that they must avenge their goddess Florence. And with a shout, they rushed into battle at the guy. The main character, in turn, turned around and ran away. All he could do was run as fast as he could from the crowd of armed people. And the girl mentor grinned, insisting that if you play, you have to play to the end. Alan, in turn, could barely escape. The crowd of men continued to run after him, not letting go of their powerful guns, to which the boy, hiding behind a huge stone, thought that the system was simply forcing him to make more and more enemies. He decided to count the points and strengthen the skills available to him at all costs. Otherwise, sooner or later, one of these guys will definitely beat him up. The main character ran behind one of the farthest large stones. He sat down to rest, as he had already been running for a long time to get away from them and hide as far as possible. He wondered where he was. And getting to his feet, he looked around. In front of him, is a tall blue transparent waterfall. Tall fluffy trees grew around him, and the bright yellow sun was shining. But still, Alan decided to hide in the tall green bushes to watch the halo around him. Looking from behind the bushes, the boy realized that this was the mountain behind the library. He couldn't understand how he ended up here. This is a restricted area of the sanctuary where students are not allowed to enter. Exception. Special circumstances. Then the boy noticed someone's figure standing near the waterfall. There was a girl with long hair. She stepped onto the shore, emerging from the clear, warm water. The main character immediately grabbed the bushes tighter. He opened his mouth at the sight of a woman emerging from the water. She was completely naked. Only a haze of steam glowed around her naked body. She turned her gaze towards the bushes, and she said the name Alana, addressing him. Noticing the boy in the bushes, Raya called him to come closer to her looking straight at the main character. She asked the guy what he was doing here. And Alan went to meet the girl with his head down so as not to embarrass her with his gaze. He explained to his mentor that he ended up here completely by accident, that he wasn't even going to peek at her. He thought that he was here because of the second mentor. Why then was the third mentor here? To which the girl answered him that she teaches meditation in this place, in this gorgeous waterfall. And violators of her peace will be punished. The main character asked the master to get dressed so that the girl would not freeze. She immediately looked at him with a look that seemed to pierce right through him. And she explained that since this happened, his punishment would be to help her with clothes. A light trail of transparent white haze stretched from Raya, as if steam had enveloped her and a whole waterfall. He got down on one knee and lowered his head, obeying his mentor. 
and he picked up her thin, soft, lilac-colored clothes. After which, without raising his eyes, he pulled out the clothes at arm's length and presented them closer to the girl's mentor. Raya, in turn, reached out with her hand to the clothes and immediately stopped, asking the boy to put the clothes on her. Alan fell silent, not expecting this. He immediately began to sweat, dropping beads of sweat onto his lap. But when he got to his feet, he still threw her light, delicate robe over the back of his mentor, after which the girl turned her front to him so that he pulled his sleeves over her hands. He obeyed, but did not even dare to look up at the naked girl. He dressed her very slowly, since the mentor herself was very gentle. Covering the girl's body with the edge of her clothes, he accidentally touched her soft, silky skin. The main character got goosebumps all over his body. He was very tense. It was as if he was handling a fragile, very delicate vessel. And at the end, he carefully tied a belt around her waist. Raya started talking about what she heard about the boy, knowing about the test that will take place next month. He immediately sat down on one knee in front of her, clasped his hands, and whispered that it was so. He really knew about it. And the teacher added that since he was their student, shouldn't he worry about it? Alan immediately wondered, as if he didn't know what to answer the girl. After all, he really didn't prepare for this. He explained this by saying that he was afraid of discussions. Everyone else thinks that he is not worthy to be their student. And he thinks about how to get rid of these ridiculous, stupid guys. The teacher turned to face him. Thin streams of delicate white steam were still emanating from her body. She threw her piercing gaze at the main character. Her pupils glowed with a violet bright light. It seemed to Alan at such moments that the master could see right through him. He was already sweating at that moment. Raya, lowering her head, promised the boy to keep the fact that he came here a secret. The boy thought that he was very lucky this time. He wiped away with his hands the streams of sweat running down his forehead. And then the main character, clasping his hands together, bowed to the girl, saying goodbye. The warning bug congratulated the boy on the great achievement of the enemy of thousands of students, to which the boy was very surprised. Why as many as a thousand? It's so much. The system explained that the teleportation function would soon be available to him. The time is assigned by the system, and he will gain the ability to practice and gain skills and requisites in another world. And the system immediately notified him that 100% of the execution was currently loaded. Alan exclaimed, he only now realized what the system was leading to. The boy opened his mouth from the thoughts coming to him. He began to sweat again and suddenly took off into flight. Or rather, the system tried to send him there as punishment. He flew up to the fluffy green crowns of the trees. All around, high mountains rose with their peaks towards the sky. And the guy flew down, making his way through the thick of the forest. With a bright yellow beam, he pierced a huge dark cave, having made a passage to the very bottom of the tunnel. And the main character collapsed to the bottom of the cave. He had already made a hole in the solid soil. The boy stood up on one elbow and knitting his eyebrows, threatened, banging his fist on the stone. He decided that one of them definitely had to die. With their punishments, there will soon be nothing left of him. And here in front of us is the Hall of Spiritual Practices. This magic circle was specially created for the students of the sanctuary. They say that with each level passed, practice in that place increases the speed of development tenfold. In other words, after completing 18 rounds, everyone who is there will develop 180 times faster than usual. In the middle of the room stood John, the manager of the spiritual practice hall. And with a serious, thoughtful look, he called the next one to him. The main character approached the gray-haired man sitting at the table. He turned to John, hesitating a little. The manager asked the boy what he came for, and looking at the guy, he asked his name, level of development, and length. He prepared a brush to write something down. The boy thought, scratching the back of his head, why announce this publicly? After all, now he can't do it. Alan, the guy answered. Seventh level, five and a half inches, that is, 18 centimeters. The gray-haired man raised his head up, looking at the main character. He asked at length, as if he hadn't heard. The boy got busy, and he realized that next time, he would need to specifically name his height, and not this nonsense that he was referring to. The manager sent the boy to the second round, since he had the seventh level. And he said that if he realized that he couldn't stand it, then he should just leave. Otherwise, he must be prepared for anything, including loss of consciousness and explosion. Alan became a little sad, 
thinking that the second round was probably too easy. Next month he will have to undergo a test, and for this he will need to become much stronger. And then John explained that Nalan, the genius who took first place in last year's competition, only dared to enter the third round. And at his age, he only reached the seventh level of development. This is not enough. And he advised me not to take my life for the sake of ambition. Three guys stood behind Alan. They joked to the guy that he shouldn't try to commit suicide after his mentors abandoned him. Another guy added that he himself decided to try that adventure with the stairs. And he deserved it. The third added that he had no shame or conscience. Expulsion from the sanctuary is tantamount to lifelong damnation. To which the boy thought that these three guys were exactly like the owner. They said that he owes everything he has to his mentors. And they don't think the kid can even handle the first round. And on the second, he will simply disgrace himself. The second one, named Sally, said that Alan has always been a loser. And he is afraid that the main character does not understand how important development and physical strength are here, to which the third asked them all to stop. After all, the guy is not like them, and they will always be head and shoulders above. He said this while looking at himself in the mirror, enjoying his beauty. Alan answered them with his arms crossed over his chest, saying that they had achieved a lot in recent years of practice. And the one who admired himself, Billy, should have looked less in the mirror, Otherwise, sooner or later, the heart will not be able to withstand such a terrible sight. And he decided that since they had gotten into trouble themselves, he would not be polite to them. The three men who had just mocked him were simply stunned by what the main character said in their direction. Putting his hands on his hips, the boy continued to explain that they now had nothing to say. And he laughed to himself at their expression, waiting impatiently for them to get angry so he can earn anger points. The guys decided that he was talking like that only because he wanted to irritate them. After all, he doesn't think that they will fall for it. And what can he even understand about beauty? Because they are sex symbols. The main character began to worry why the guys weren't angry. After all, it was his grand plan to piss off the boys. After all, only a couple of days have passed, and they have become models of self-control. The boy thought that they might have developed immunity, and then he didn't have time to calm down because he wanted to anger them, but he himself began to get nervous. The system notified that the teleport function has been activated. Alan immediately exclaimed, not realizing that this was really true. The boy was very surprised and completely sweated. The warning bug explained that the boy would be transported to Mount League. He couldn't understand why this was happening so suddenly. Mount Legu belongs to the 18 dragons. And then the system notified that the teleportation had already completed. For some reason, the system was somehow evil. The huge, towering Mount Ligu stretched out in front of us. There, among the high peaks and green trees, there were small estates. Here was a detachment of 18 dragons. The future head of the Lingju Jordan Palace. The soul exchange was successful. Synchronization with the memory of the previous owner of the body begins. The mission is to gain 5,000 anger points. The original owner was playing the game of Go at this time and preparing to master the knowledge of Baming. However, he encountered an unexpected problem. This is what we are talking about now. Will the owner be able to cope with 18 circles in the Hall of Spiritual Development if he acquires this knowledge? He sat thinking about it for a long time. Various thoughts came to the boy's head. Then he jumped up sharply and ran to the teacher on his own behalf, greeting him. The teacher looked at him and was very surprised. The gray-haired man stood in front of him, stretching out to his full height. He explained to the boy that he was too ugly and scared him a bit, after which the man asked the student how even freaks can be talented. How did he manage to figure out this game? He cannot understand how ugliness affects spiritual development, and he added that it is a sin to laugh at the poor. And he was still thinking of passing on his knowledge to this student. And if he were a teacher, this guy would not lament the ugliness of his successor. Then the alarm bug announced sharply, Attention! Attention! Toothless John is a true connoisseur of beauty. The man with gray hair still couldn't calm down why the guy was so scary. The student guy asked him why he was sighing. After all, even he doesn't care. He looked at the man, knitting his thin eyebrows. The boy said, turning to the teacher, that before he had only heard the man's name, 
but having met him in person, he was convinced that it suited him perfectly. The teacher asked me to tell him more about this. Then, the guy continued that he had always wondered what his teacher's name meant. And I realized what it means, namely, toothless. The teacher did not expect such an answer from the boy, from what he considered his ugly student. But his name really sounded like the word toothless. It was like a play on words. Anger points plus. The gray-haired man began to get very angry. He was already seething with a fit of rage. The student said that his teacher was an old man who needed to eat porridge. The gray-haired man became even more angry. Then, the teacher called the boy a bald freak and asked what he meant by that. Anger points were plus. And the guy thought that if he angered him to death, then how would the points be calculated? He proceeded to tell the teacher that he was a freak because Buddha didn't care about appearances. And Bodhidharma shaved and has not used Rejai since then. Rejoice is the name of the shampoo. Anger points plus. The teacher asked him not to talk nonsense that he does not understand. And for the guy to explain to him exactly what he meant, the student decided to start over. And he said that he had broken his party, so he should give him the techniques. And when they're done with that, they'll get back to the topic of hair and old people eating porridge. The main character decided that he could really die of anger this way. So first you need to take care of the transfer of knowledge, otherwise what a loss it will be. The teacher said that those blue books contained all the knowledge that he had collected and applied over several decades. And he advised the student to read these books slowly, explaining that he himself had personally practiced for decades. And with the boy's natural abilities, it will take him 30 years just to get moving. And if he needs his advice, by then, he will already be dead. Then the teacher continued that if the boy admits that he is really ugly, he will pass on all the knowledge directly to him. He advised the guy to use his bald head and stop creating unnecessary problems for himself. Then, the boy began to unclench his fingers one by one, until he unclenched his four fingers, raising them upward. To which the teacher said that four years is a long time, and he might not wait. To which the student replied that it was enough, and he even added extra. Then the chief student bent down to pick up the book, and he took the big, thick textbook in his hand. On the cover it said, Peerless Techniques of the North Sea, a crash course in self-improvement. He thought that he had a yin and yang body, so he could learn skills hundreds of times faster. Then the boy noticed that the old man had been caught, and the teacher, in turn, waited for the guy to beg him on his knees. The teacher explained that these techniques are not so easy to understand, but if he just explains to him what the boy's words about porridge meant, and he will also admit that he is an ugly, bald donkey, and will say how handsome his teacher is. Only in this case will he immediately transfer knowledge to him. And he asked to fulfill his last wish, to which the student replied that he is such a person. If he is told to go left, he will go right, and that he didn't mean four years, and four hours. After these words, the teacher laughed heartily and said that the student apparently damaged his brain when he shaved. Then, the guy asked the teacher one request. What if he learns everything so that the gray-haired man promises him something? And the teacher agreed to fulfill even ten promises. Then the student, gritting his teeth, answered in the affirmative. He agreed to such an agreement with the teacher, and it shone with some bright blue light. Then the teacher, seeing the aura of the northern sea, was simply stunned and said that this simply could not happen. And then, four hours later, the teacher appeared to him. He opened his mouth in amazement. How could the boy cope on his own? Without outside help, the man had sweat running down his face. He was not only surprised this could not happen. He couldn't understand why the Northern Sea Technique had such an aura. This is what surprised his boy. The student knitted his thin eyebrows. He looked intently and very sternly at his teacher. He told the teacher that he had learned it. And he even corrected some of the gray-haired man's mistakes. He told the guy that in order to study the Northern Sea Technique, he needed to spend his internal energy, otherwise different techniques in his body would come into conflict, all the meridians would be destroyed, and he himself would go crazy and spit out blood. And he told the student that he did not know if Rejoice was his ancestor, but he would not be happy about his lie. Then the boy decided that he needed to show him a couple of tricks so that he would believe it.
The student asked permission to find out if he had learned this technique. Would any other technique be within his grasp? Any point on the body is now capable of inviting both yin and yang. In addition, he is now not susceptible to poisons, and true qi protects his body. We were talking about the battery points, where the needles are placed. The teacher agreed with the guy. Then, the student asked the man to try to send him. To which the teacher suggested simply splitting the stone table, and he would look at it. The boy immediately agreed, and told the gray-haired man to watch very carefully. There was a loud sound. A lot of bright, deep light spread around the boy. The explosion was like thunder, sparks flying everywhere. Plumes of smoke and thick clouds of gray dust. The teacher opened his mouth in great surprise. After all, along with the sparks, pieces of stones from the stone table split by the boy also flew. The student asked for forgiveness for not calculating the strength and demolishing the old nest of a gray-haired man. The teacher wondered who this guy was. It's not even easy to call him a genius. His power is so terrifying. Looking at the teacher, the boy asked if he understood that he was not lying to which the teacher replied that he would not break his promise to him. And the boy did not hide his joy, but he said that he would demand much more from the teacher. To which the teacher remarked that don't put your finger in the boy's mouth. The student said what an old man was like, eating porridge while leaning on the wall. The despicable one leans against the wall, shameless, toothless, and indecent, because porridge flows from his mouth. The man was very angry at this explanation, and he asked the boy not to commit. After all, why is he unscrupulous, toothless, and indecent? The boy was trying to find out if the man was obsessed with his past love because he misses her. Will the teacher tell you what he did? To which the teacher blamed himself for incontinence. And he decided to lock himself in a cave so as not to be seen by anyone again. The student suggested that the teacher first learn for both of them to admit their mistakes. Does he agree with his reasoning? and he continued that he had a good friend. His name is Alan. He is a nice guy, deceived by his own father. And he added that the man must protect him. After all, the guy is quite stubborn, and he shouldn't be allowed to do stupid things. To which the gray-haired man asked if the guy was handsome. And the student replied that of course he was handsome. The student continued that in addition, from now on, he undertakes to tell everyone that because of his beauty, he simply cannot hold back any longer and dreams of becoming his teacher. If he says this, the guy will promise him not to touch him again. Anger points plus 200, the gray-haired man shouted in rage, refusing to do such a thing. To which the boy threw up his hands, saying that the teacher was really just a weak old man, and it would be stupid to expect anything from a teacher other than deception. Then the teacher agreed, promising that he would do everything. After all, he was still scared of the guy. The student hurried the gray-haired man, ready to discuss other terms along the way, to which the old man replied that he had not been out in public for several decades. And he asked the boy to tell him a little about life outside. The main character briefed the teacher in detail on the current situation. He, in turn, held back his tears, vowing to end all evil in this world. At this time, two gray-haired old men seemed to hear some noise and turned sharply in that direction. The teacher officially stated that that pie show game was just an excuse, and this guy is the most handsome young man in the world. He announced that he would be his teacher. Thanks to the crowd's outrage, Alan was able to earn a ton of bonus points. The system congratulated the owner on completing the mission and mastering the divine skill baming, the reward for which the boy will receive in the main world. The system continued to notify that in five seconds, the main character would be teleported to the main world, and he suggested getting ready. Alan thought what would happen here, how he would leave. He just rewrote history, and now he is his own fan. Before us is another dimension, main world. A huge spacious estate, the clear sun illuminates the roofs of the houses, and so the main character stood with his arms folded along his body. He closed his eyes, being in the rays of transparent blue light, the boy opened his eyes and immediately knitted his eyebrows. His gaze fell straight ahead. He noticed that nothing had changed here. Not far away, opposite him, stood three guys who always mocked him. Alan thought this was a very wonderful skill, and this way he can level up much faster. 
One of the guys turned to the main character, advising him to quickly open his eyes to the truth. He explained that only out of pity, he was ready to let him through to the second round. That you shouldn't turn up your nose if he doesn't want trouble. In turn, the boy said something about who needs the second round, because he was going to the 18th. The guy's faces instantly changed. They opened their eyes, which became several times larger. And angry, they exclaimed as if it were the 18th. The boy wanted to die somehow. They reminded him that it was only recently that he was in the first stage of cultivation, and his weak body will fall victim to the energy of that place as soon as he crosses the threshold of that circle. To which the main character replied that if he manages to get out of there alive, the guy who admired himself so much will no longer look at himself in the mirror. And his friends will tell everyone what a scruffy butt and long chin he has. To which the guy answered him that since he wanted to die so much, he would not stop him. And they will discuss the rest later, if the boy survives. Alan approached the manager and asked him for permission to go to the 18th circle. To which the teacher replied that you shouldn't do this just to anger someone. There is no need to risk your destiny for this. To which the boy replied very seriously and persistently that this was his decision and he was confident in it. His opponents around said that this was a very creative way of suicide. And since he is in such a hurry to die, why should they stop him? The guys began to ask the manager, who did not know what to do, to allow the main character to enter the 18th circle. A girl in a red robe approached the gray-haired man it was Elder Lucy. The teacher asked the elder what would happen if something happened to the guy. To which Lucy replied that the path to improvement cannot be simple. If this were so, then everyone could become a master. And since this is his choice, he probably knows what he should be prepared for. After the steward consulted with the elder, he gave Alan his consent. And the teacher waved his brush, writing on the sign the name of the main character and his 18th circle of cultivation. The elder thanked the boy warmly, explaining that he did not expect to see her there. After all, she usually does not appear at such events. They say that this girl is an excellent healer, and if something happens, she definitely won't be left idle. That's lucky. Alan waved to the guys, grinning sarcastically. He said goodbye, warning that he would see each other later. To which the guy replied that he was dancing with him. The manager invited the boy to stand on the platform which would take him to the 18th circle. And so the main character climbed onto the high platform. She glowed with rays of blue light. The boy also began to glow, as if engulfed in a bright, gentle glow, after which Alan moved as if into another dimension. The same stream of deep, bright light moved him to the 18th circle, and the manager and the elder remained in their places. Along with the three guys who mocked the boy, they looked at the main monitor, watching how the main character ended up in another place. The boy was already standing in front of the entrance to some huge high room. He looked up at the building, after which he placed his hand on the huge door. With all the confidence in yourself and your acquired abilities, Lucy thought about how Alan planned to cope with the force that was about to befall him. His movement was almost over. He was still in the bright blue portal. And now the shell of blue light was slowly disappearing. A little more and the boy will be alone with the unknown. His teachers and children continued to look at the huge monitor screen as the main character was about to enter the closed door. One of the guys said that this guy has no idea how terrible his death will be. And he thinks that the guy doesn't fully realize that he will lose his life because of his own arrogance. The second of them had even heard that the master of this circle was extremely cruel and despotic, to which the man who loves to look in the mirror replied that Alan was unlucky because his death as a former student of the Immortals would be doubly sad. The main character knocked on the door, holding the round ring, to which the door growled that the boy did not know the rules and rudely asked to remove his dirty hands. The boy immediately pulled away from the door. Various thoughts were burning in my head. It was as if the door's impudent words struck him like lightning. One of the locks on the door asked the other why he scared the child to which the second replied that if the guy doesn't know the rules, then he should teach him a lesson. Alan again reached out to the castle, asking if he was alive, to which the castle replied that everything here is alive, and how he came here without even bothering to find out about it. After which the door itself, on which eyes and a mouth appeared, smiled and said that so many years had passed since they had seen a person there, and offered to let the main character in, asking the castle if he was happy about this 
to which the castle reminded the boy that his body would definitely not withstand the tests, and he would die here, and there would not even be anyone to take his body. To which the second castle said that the boy was quite okay, and perhaps their mistress would like him. Alan, laughing, promised the door to handle everything and asked her to let him inside. The first castle replied that he liked the arrogance of this guy. And the second one, on the contrary, said that this infuriates him, and if the boy wants to die so much, he will not stop him. And then it happened, he knocked on the front door, and she let Alan inside. A bright yellow light poured from inside, as if greeting the guy. Words of greeting and a malicious, creepy laugh were heard. The boy, holding his hands behind his back in a lock, boldly moved forward. Nothing was visible there, as if a white fog had enveloped everything around. And so, having passed through a veil of thick fog, another world opens up before him, with birds, sun, mountains, and blue sky. It was some kind of huge city, very green, sunny, and bright, as if nothing bad could happen there. Alan took a couple more steps forward and stopped to look around. Some voice lured him, inviting him to quickly go inside. The main character thought that these beautiful landscapes somehow did not fit with such a terrible place. After all, this place is very similar to paradise. The boy stood for a while thinking and decided to go a little further forward. A green fluffy tree grew in front of him, and under the tree there was a girl sitting leaning against the trunk. It was the Lady of the Asura Hall, a beautiful demon. She was resting with her eyes closed, apparently thinking about something. Alan, putting his hands on his hips, looked in her direction with some regret, wondering where the girl was from. She opened her eyes slightly and half asleeply looked at the boy. Then the girl's eyes opened so wide, she was just very surprised. How did the participant appear here? The main character began to approach the girl, and he immediately greeted her clasping his hands in front of him and leaning slightly. He started to talk to the girl, but then stopped. She began to look at the boy somehow strangely, and then pink bright rays began to emanate from her pink robe. From her body, they flew straight towards the boy, and then they glowed like a pillar, rising high into the sky in front of him. Alan stopped dead in his tracks. Streams of sweat ran down his face. He continued to stand and look at the hole that remained in front of him. It was the work of the girl, or rather the power that she radiated. The boy thought that the girl's character was not very good. He stared at her, wondering what else she could do. After all, he just said hello to her. The girl said she did not allow him to move, and he should answer only when she asks and move only when she allows it. The toy, which the madam held in her arms, noticed that the guy did not understand the rules and he asked permission to teach the guy a lesson. The toys surrounding the girl vied with each other to give the boy a beating, to which the girl reassured her kids, agreeing with them that they were indeed right. Madame asked the main character what his status is in the sanctuary and what his level of development is, to which Alan replied that he was an external disciple, the seventh stage of icy blood. And then I thought, looking at the girl, that in Sichuan Opera, they don't change facial expressions as quickly as she does. The girl looked more closely at the boy, and she asked if it was true of icy blood, to which the main character replied that it's true, that there are no rules that would prohibit him from participating, to which the girl replied that he should speak only when she allows him, and if he breaks this rule again, he will lose his leg. Then I asked who his master was. The boy clasped his hands in front of him, leaned back a little, and answered that the four were immortals after which the girl realized that he was the same new student. Therefore, it is not surprising that he dared to come here. And in this case, she will be gentler with him, so as not to disgrace the names of immortal masters. Alan leaned in front of the girl again, thinking that the teachers said that this girl didn't get along with them. The nearby wooden letter houses whispered to her not to be gentle with this guy. The girl beckoned him to follow her, inviting him to go straight. The toys next to her threatened him, Looking at him with evil glances, the girl turned her head to the boy, and she warned that the test was already beginning, and so she brought the guy into some large room. He stood in a circle in front of the steps, and I expected what would happen next. The girl continued to explain that for a long time, no one had dared to visit her to take the test, and I thought that the boy felt too lonely. The toys around supported the owner, 
shouting that no one came here, no one at all. Flower pots and umbrellas, jugs and brooms on the street, remembered one guy who came four years ago. And he almost succeeded. After all, the boy was the only one who was so close to success. The girl said that very unexpectedly, the immortal masters decided to take such a weak person as their student. And she added that at least this guy clearly doesn't look like a crybaby. And I thought that you shouldn't get upset ahead of time, because anything can happen. She smiled sweetly and clapped her hands. After which, the girl emphasized that he is a student of immortals, so she is looking forward to how he will prove himself. The main character decided that the girl was trying to intimidate him, but he remained very indifferent, not even blinking an eye. The girl decided that so much talk was enough already, because she should already get down to the main business. And raising her arms to the sides, standing on the pedestal, the girl announced the beginning of the test. Her toys also raised their paws up, supporting the mistress. And so it began. A wooden boat appeared out of nowhere in front of the boy. It was as if water was splashing on her. The guy sharply spread his arms to the sides. After all, the water became somehow strange. It began to splash, taking on the appearance of foam. The girl was already far from Alan, and she apologized for her kids, calling toys your children. Supposedly, they will not be able to cope with the pressure of a strong aura. Therefore, he himself will fight in this icy cage. The main character asked the system to tell him more about this place. In turn, the alarm bug began to explain that the test was divided into four stages. In each of them, pressure from spiritual force of varying intensity will be exerted on him. To win, you need to successfully complete each stage. And if he gives up halfway, his level will not change, and the energy spent will not come back. To which Alan asked if he could use Baming's new technique in the test. The system responded that it could. The activation period for the technology was one minute. But do not forget that due to its level, other functions given by the system will be inactive during the 10 hours. The boy asked if the alarm bug could remove such an unpleasant moment for his sake. To which the system refused the boy. The main character began to get angry, talking about the inconvenience in this case. After all, he cannot know what he may encounter in the next hour after activation, when the system is inactive. Meanwhile, the girl crossed her legs and asked the boy if he was ready for the test to begin. Alan immediately took his will into his fist. He closed his eyes for a minute, tuned in inside, and released hot steam from his mouth. And he said that he was completely ready. If he timed it correctly and used the right skills, there shouldn't be any big problems. The girl warned that now there would be the first soul-hurting Pipa. She raised her index finger up. Turquoise Pipa is ready. It is like the singing of an oriole. Some girl transformed into a transparent blue maiden. She had a large harp in her hands, and she began to pluck the strings of the instrument. Everything around was glowing with a blue glow. It was as if night had fallen, and bright little stars were twinkling around. She climbed up playing the harp, and the boy raised his gaze, preparing for what he himself did not yet know. The girl thought that at the first stage his level could even play into his hands, because an aura of such strength could not bring him time. And the time has come for the second stage. The lady with a harp in her hands began to fly closer to the main character. Its blue bright light has almost reached the boy. He was quite tense. The boy knitted his eyebrows, thinking about something. He realized that this is triple energy, and he can withstand it if he tries hard. The guy covered his mouth with his hand. The system notified the boy that the pond in the sanctuary was very good for spiritual development. And she advised me to swim in it more often. To which Alan replied that that pond belongs to Raya. And she definitely won't let him there. The guy was already making a plan in his head. His tension only intensified. He very strongly felt the energy that was gradually enveloping him. The girl in pink warned the boy that the second stage was beginning, namely, the graceful gate. The leaves of the trees do not cast shadows, and the snow turns the wind into darkness, was heard from the blue transparent maiden. She rose high, extended her hand forward, and seemed to throw something down. Then, leaving the harp in a bright glow, she stretched both hands forward and released something from her hands. There were even more rays. The boy fell to one knee, leaning on the ground. He lowered his head down 
and blue lightning circled around him, the main character felt that this energy had already begun to increase. And not just a few times, but six times. The system reported that it was six times higher than the energy of the first stage. What the boy got angry about was why the bug didn't notify him in advance. The system replied that he did not ask her about it. The girl explained to Alan that if he stopped now, he could leave unharmed. And if he decides to continue, his body can be torn to pieces in just 10 seconds. The boy had already started bleeding from his mouth, and he decided at that moment to use the baming technique. His hair on his head glowed with golden light. A gentle yellow smoke began to emanate from his head, after which the boy was spun by a golden whirlwind of some inexplicable energy. It was as if he had wrapped himself in a golden blanket, golden protection, so that the blue energy of the girl with the harp began to push away from the main character. The girl in pink standing to the side was very surprised. She watched the boy, thinking that he was about to be torn apart, but that was not the case. Her animals nearby were also surprised. The boy said that he could stand it. With this power increase factor, he would hardly be able to hold out for more than a few minutes. The strength in the third stage increases 12-fold. Without the technique, Baming would definitely crush him right away, and you can activate this technique only once. Perhaps, thanks to this technique, he will be able to pass the third stage. Using it later would be too risky. The girl noticed that the Disciple of the Immortals actually had some abilities. She beamed with a smile, because there was hope. I'm tired of everyone failing these tests. This guy is definitely crazy. After all, he was just able to absorb this energy. The main character, in turn, said that he underestimated this place. He didn't think the second stage would be so terrifying, and he added that he was even a little taken aback. A trickle of scarlet blood ran down his chin. He thought that there was nothing else left for him because the boy had already used the baming technique. He doesn't have any weapons yet. A girl in a pink robe clasped her hands. She expressed her sincere joy, and she explained that she would now look forward to the next stage of the test. The main character thanked the girl for such sincere praise. He was all wet from sweat and worry. He concluded that what he had just absorbed was simply incredible, and the third stage will be even more powerful. It was as if he was standing in front of a blackboard, and holding his chin, he began to count something. The boy knitted his eyebrows, being very serious. The first stage, plus the second stage at 18. This means that at the third stage, the force will be 18 times 12, 261. Alan was simply shocked by such staggering numbers. He screamed in horror at what he was about to go through. This is a test or some kind of torture. Why was it so beautiful to call an ordinary murder? He thought that he was not able to reach the fourth stage. If the son of Lady Luck herself were here, he would not have been able to cope. And of course he has a system, but it's useless until he's in a real hole. You need to be much more careful. The girl watched the boy sitting on a large, beautiful throne. She asked him if the boy was ready to begin the next stage of the test. The main character stood up to his full height. He was already a little exhausted, and for some reason he grabbed his stomach with his hands. The girl looked at the boy with a little pity, and she said that she hadn't even started yet. He looked quite depressing. Alan explained to the girl that he had a stomach ache and asked the lady for help, at which she was very angry and immediately refused the boy's request. She noticed that he had no idea what this place was. How could he even think about this? And she instructed him to show more respect, after which she let the guy go to do his business and come back as soon as possible. After all, he knew that a test awaited him. Was it really impossible not to eat all sorts of things the day before? After which the boy bent over and explained that he could do it anywhere if she didn't mind. To which the girl became even more angry, explaining that they needed to start the test as soon as possible, so let her leave as quickly as possible, doing her job. The main character replied with a smile that he would continue the test. And then he thought that he had managed to win a whole half a minute, knowing that such a thing would discourage the girl. The girl, meanwhile, lowered her head in anticipation. She blushed a little, apparently too deep in her thoughts. Go through the rocks to the clouds, keep the purity of your soul in this chaos, flowed the song of the Blue Maiden. Then, the music began to flow to the words of the song. The girl played a tender, beautiful melody on the flute.
The main character directed his gaze upward to where this girl was. It was as if shards of ice were flying towards him, falling in pieces to the ground. Alan stood in suspense, not knowing what to expect this time. At the beginning of the third stage, he felt that the power he had absorbed seemed to grow in his body. After all, many of the techniques he knows take their basis in Baming. Although it has many flaws, it is definitely good. After all, hundreds of rivers merge together, overflowing their banks. And you have to become a different person to repay the debt. The boy sent his fiery hand forward, and he said that the power that flows in him is stronger than he can master, but he can still cope. He just needs to hold out until these two forces merge together. The girl, watching what was happening, thought that this stage was different from the previous one, but it seemed that the boy could not hold out any longer. The girl turned to the main character, wondering if he was ready to give his life for the sake of the test. If he refuses to participate, then she will let him leave from there, to which the boy confidently replied that he could. Blood flowed from his mouth again, but the guy directed all his strength to fight this powerful energy. Rays of golden bright light shone around him, and spinning in the golden rays, Alan shouted in a loud voice that he could not lose in this test. His eyes lit up as if with demonic fire. He took a step forward, white rays emanating from his leg like lightning. Alan gathered all his will into a fist. He began to fight this powerful energy with even greater enthusiasm. The girl thought that the main character had gone crazy. After all, the boy is really about to be torn apart. She took a step forward and became wary, to which the boy replied that he was fine. My hands just hurt a little, but otherwise everything is tolerable. He touched some kind of bright yellow ball. Everything around began to shine with golden sunlight. These rays blinded even the girl who was watching Alan. He continued to fight, being very stubborn and brave. The boy seemed to be immersed in this energy, merging with the golden light. The girl wondered if he was a person at all, after all, the guy managed to calm down and curb such incredibly strong energy, to which the boy asked if she had ever seen something like this. After all, he probably practically passed the test. Meanwhile, the fiery mentor, wearing some kind of bandana on her head, stood hidden in the room behind one closet. She thought that in this form, no one would recognize her. A whole crowd of people was already gathering around the huge monitor. They were surprised how he was able to pass as many as three tests. This cannot be. Perhaps the level is simply too low. To which one of them replied that this guy really surprises how they can say such things. Perhaps he is simply jealous that the main character became a student of the immortals. The guy who likes to look in the mirror asked the others that they are blind? After all, the first three stages were probably just a test. They must remember the trials of the immortals. Their formation was somehow disabled and this guy was probably cheating. Alice replied that the immortals would certainly recognize the deception, to which the guy began to make excuses that he didn't mean it. The girl asked everyone to shut up and see how the main character copes with the fourth stage. It seemed to her that Alan had only gotten this far because he was confident of his victory. So she still has time. The man who loved the mirror, folding his arms on his chest, was sure that he would not be able to pass the next test, because before that he was just lucky and he will just wait until his body turns into mincemeat. Standing nearby, the disguised Isla asked the guy if a man should discuss someone behind his back, to which he replied to the girl that it was none of her business. But she believes that students should not underestimate immortal masters, to which the guy replied that if the masters had valued Alan, they would not have thrown him off the mountain. And if he really were their student, he definitely would not have been treated like this. And the fiery girl said that these immortals how could they do this to the main character? The guy turned to Ayla and noticed that she looked somehow very familiar, to which the girl said that there was nothing like that, he simply made a mistake. And immediately realizing that now he could see through it, she immediately rushed to the exit, away from the room. Only smoke remained from her escape. The guys wondered what it could be, and the fiery girl in turn hid behind a pillar in the room. She realized that even with a disguise, she would be recognized. And that guy had a very angry look. She peeked out from behind the pillar, looking at the main monitor. And I really hoped that the main character would not die. She began to worry about the boy, but immediately pulled herself together, clenching her fists. And again, I got angry with myself, 
thinking that she came here to laugh at his failure. Let him really die. After all, a guy without a worthy master, who doesn't really know how to do anything and takes a bath where he didn't get caught, is like him. The girl scolded him to herself. Then, she reassured herself that everything was not so bad there, and that she hopes he doesn't die. This is how the girl had seven Fridays a week. Her thoughts were racing as the seasons changed in the world. So did her mood and thoughts. What if he really decided to marry her, Isla thought. Apparently, he realized that they were completely different in status and therefore took this desperate step. How could this even happen? This guy is probably just crazy. So these confused thoughts in the girl's head haunted her. She thought that if Alan wanted to marry her, he could just ask. After all, there is absolutely no shame in being rejected by an immortal master. Meanwhile, the main character stood in front of a girl in a pink robe. A blue veil separated them from each other. He had the feeling that someone was spying on him. After all, when he sneezed, he shuddered violently. The girl turned to Alan, explaining that since he managed to break through the master formation, it was not surprising that he was able to go through three stages. But whether luck or strength helps him, they learn during the fourth stage, to which the boy replied that this girl was simply uneven to his master mentors. She, in turn, became very angry. After all, it was an insult towards her. Isla, sitting on the floor behind a tall, thick column, was surprised that the boy praised them in front of such a crowd of people. She was kind of embarrassed. And I thought that it was a pity that this world was so cruel that they couldn't be together. The girl in pink, in turn, continued to be angry at Alan's words. And she didn't agree with the guy that she was worse than his mentors. She immediately laughed, explaining that this nasty girl became a master thanks to flattery. How dare he even compare them? The boy realized that the girl in pink had swallowed his bait and was hooked, and he continued to say that at least he had already completed three of the four stages. And if there was a master here, she would have dealt with this in one blow. Who is stronger than he, she, or his master? Then Ayla turned her head towards the monitor and thought that the guy was talking nonsense. After all, he definitely wields a sword better than her. And that time she was just bragging. She really could have gotten rid of him, but she wouldn't have done that. What if Alan guessed that she would come there? That this is all a test, and he is saying exactly what Isla would like to hear. She planned to teach this guy a lesson when he returned, so that he would not say such nonsense again. A tall, transparent waterfall stretches ahead. In this sacred world, water, plants, stones, air, spiritual energy are in abundance. Water is the source of life, powerful and gentle. The water fairy prays for all living things. At the Tianhu Sanctuary in Kangming, she gave birth to a child. There were many soft toys around. She took her child in her arms. The baby who received her blessing was loved by all living beings. However, a girl in a pink dress was surrounded by little animals, live teddy bears, and bunnies. However, this beloved girl took the whip into her hands and punished the poor cute animals. To which the mother of this girl wondered if this was definitely a child of the water element and not the fire one. After all, she is definitely very strong. The girl, in turn, told her mother that she really liked this game, namely, to punish the poor stuffed animals. The girl's mother, falling asleep, thought that maybe someone had replaced her. After all, she was the complete opposite of her child. Then, after some time, the girl's mother, taking her by the shoulders, began to explain that the girl was already quite an adult. Sooner or later, she will inherit her mother's position. Why doesn't she get acquainted with the human world before this moment? To which the girl's eyes immediately lit up. She was very happy about this idea and, of course, agreed. The girl in the pink robe had poised 3,000 anger points. She angrily warned the main character to watch his language. How can he even compare that savage with her? To which the boy replied that whether she agrees with this or not is, of course, up to her to decide. But in his opinion, this test is like a paper tiger, a lie that can be destroyed with just one touch. Alan smiled widely. This was his next plan. He realized that the show was about to begin, deliberately provoking the girl. Anger points plus, anger points plus. She waved her hands, explaining that this was just nonsense. Water is the source of all things, and it sees through them. The main character stood in front of the girl at full height exposing his pumped-up torso. He suspected that she was using her powers to spy on him. 
and then he pulled back, as if showing his contempt. How can she behave like this? The girl stood there for a minute as if frozen. She didn't expect such impudence from the boy, and she already began to blush from the rage that had come over her. Anger points plus ten, Alan continued to mock, saying that he was indeed right. After all, her face is redder than a monkey's ass. But his master doesn't do that. To which the girl responded by shouting that she was not prying, and that he should listen to her carefully. She simply feels everything alive. But he cannot explain this to a mere mortal. To which the main character replied that it was too late for excuses. And when he leaves here, he will reveal her true face to the whole world. People standing in front of the monitor who were watching what was happening discussed this situation from the sidelines, saying that they had not seen someone so shameless. The guy who likes to look in the mirror exclaimed how Alan dared to insult the master of Leonhu Palace. Thus, he expressed his disrespect for the water fairy, for the earth and heaven. After what the main character said to the heavenly master, she already had different thoughts and ways to punish the guy. Initially, she wanted to help him, but now it seemed to her that this was not necessary. The offended girl made it clear to him. Alan told her that he was here to undergo a test and not to accept handouts. Still seconds to go. Anger points plus 30, and the girl announced the fourth special stage, called Water Spirit. Four seconds passed. The boy perked up his ears and eyes. The blue girl had already appeared upstairs, as if she had descended from heaven. Three seconds, the countdown was going on. For two seconds, she prepared the weapon, which also glowed with a blue transparent haze. They consist of the waters of the Sea of 3,000 Passions. The girl rushed down with lightning speed, flying up to the main character. One second, a wave of horror. She raised her heavy, sharp sword, over which the waves of an entire huge ocean seemed to spill. The boy extended his hand towards him, asking to show himself. His hair fluttered from the loud, terrifying noise of the waves. System recovery. One hour and fifty minutes. Stopping a sword with bare hands. The power of baming, the system informed him. And then, at that last second of the system update, Alan caught the tip of the sword with just two fingers. Ayla looked with her surprised eyes. It was clear from her that she was worried about the boy. The girl in pink also looked at what was happening with great surprise. Water whip technique. Stopping the sword with bare hands of the ice blood stage. This is how the main character harnessed the strongest energy of the ocean. There was some kind of powerful explosion. Jets of water, like shards of glass, scattered to the sides. Alan stood in a circle, breaking huge blue waves with his strong, incredible abilities. The girl immediately began to approach the boy, and her little animals rolled head over heels down the steps from the shockwave. The system congratulated the owner for breaking through to the third level of Yuanhai. Her gift is the second stage of the Nine Songs of Heaven. The boy was very happy. After all, the third level of Yuanhai is a great power. Meanwhile, the students near the monitor opened their mouths, being very surprised. The man looking in the mirror concluded that this guy not only managed to pass the test, but also made a great breakthrough. In turn, the animals tried to run faster and faster. The water was already approaching them. Poor toys. And the girl in pink stood with her eyes wide open. A blue wave rushed over her, washing her bright face. The girl, very surprised, collapsed on the floor, not understanding how this was even possible. She sat on the floor with her mouth wide open. And the main character, coming closer to her, smiled with all his teeth. He told the girl that he realized that after all, he had not come here in vain and her eyes suddenly sparkled. The girl covered her face with her hands and began to cry very loudly, literally sobbing. The boy could not understand what was happening to her. She looked so strong, and now she's crying bitter tears right in front of him. Not at all embarrassed, she said that Alan was just mocking him, and she was not going to obey him. The animals gathered next to the owner, looking at the boy with anger, saying that this was simply shamelessness, that you can't mock a girl like that that he is a real bully, to which the boy, putting his hands on his hips, said that he had passed this test. The girl continued to cry bitterly, explaining to him that this was a mockery, to which the boy began to calm her down, saying that he would not mock her. He couldn't understand what was happening to her, and the students, standing near the monitor, looked with hatred at the main character. They stood clenching their teeth. Isla, looking out from behind the column, laughed at the girl noticing that she was crying as before, for every reason. 
However, she continued to think without fully understanding what had happened. The fiery girl thought, how did he even manage to do this? After all, he really passed this test. She couldn't believe it. Perhaps this guy is hiding something from her. Perhaps she doesn't know something about him. Alan, holding his head with his hand, turned to the siren bug. He wondered if he could open a trading platform, to which the system replied that it is possible. Completing the test will unlock new features. Does the host agree to accept the challenge of a new fight? The boy agreed. And I thought that I needed to somehow calm down the girl in the pink robe. Otherwise, she will drown everyone here. After all, her soft toys were already floating around. The main character felt that he was very tired. He was simply exhausted after going through such a serious ordeal. The system notified him that during the new test, time would stop, and the movement would begin at 30%, 50%, 70%, 80%. It was as if he was again in some kind of portal, and he froze after taking a few steps forward. And she continued to explain to the boy that he would be moved to the Tanbo family. In order to win eight daughters-in-law, he didn't quite understand what it meant to conquer. Alan thought for a moment, not understanding anything. The girl was sitting at the table, sorting through some green and white cubes. Two girls talked to each other. One said that the fifth was in the lead, then said that the sixth. The second girl said that the seventh and eighth were coming forward, and then the main character appeared on the threshold of a large mansion. He stood in the doorway. The boy had a large, wide hat on his head, and the light cloak fluttered on his body from the light breeze. He watched the picture. The girls stood, heatedly discussing something. Others sat on chairs in front of the tables, doing something there. Suddenly, someone unexpectedly grabbed the main character by the shoulder. He felt this and immediately became wary. Some old woman came up to him and asked why he was still dissatisfied if so many people were jealous of his life. Meanwhile, Ayla kept thinking about the girl in the pink dress, wondering how you can cry so much. After all, she had already cried for a whole lake. All these events took place in a new dimension, in a big, beautiful mansion. Alan answered the woman with a wide smile on his face that he was very pleased, and he introduced himself to the ladies who were in this room and were arguing about something all the time. The woman could not understand what was wrong with him, and the boy, in turn, laughed, sticking out his long tongue. The phrase to win eight daughters-in-law was burning in his head. He concluded that this is not a test, but a real gift, to which the system replied that it did not agree with him. The main character approached the table at which several girls were sitting, and he asked what they had there, to which the boy replied that it would be better if she behaved more calmly. And he continued, turning to the bug alarm, that it's strange to call it a system all the time. Can I call it Siri now? To which the system responded positively. One of the girls asked the boy why he decided to join their game, to which Alan replied that he used to be young and ignorant, but he had already changed, especially with such beautiful girls. It's a sin not to play, the boy finished. And taking the square dice in front of him, he invited the girl to play with him, and so he made his first brave move. The boy moved one of the bones forward. Alan called the girl stupid, and he waved his hand. And they, in turn, stared at the dice that the guy threw. One of the girls praised the main character, saying that he is an excellent player, a talented artist and calligrapher. The boy was very happy with such praise, and he explained that all these are trifles. He was ready to continue playing. The girls praised the boy for his talent. Alan suggested playing Baccarat, go to Texas Hold'em. He has already put the bones in front of him. The system was very surprised how a game of Mahjong could be called talent. She was seriously angry, not understanding what was wrong with the owner, to which the boy replied that before he rarely managed to find worthy opponents, but now he has such an opportunity. After three rounds with eight girls, everyone was very tired. Two of them were almost crying. They were all red from heavy games with a mischievous boy. The girls all crowded together. Some were lying, some were sitting. They were just relaxing after hard, tiring games. One of the girls asked the main character how he could be so strong, to which he laughed. And he replied that he hadn't even tried yet. He grabbed the bandana that was currently on his head. The girl turned to the main character. If he gives them a chance to rest a little, after which Alan walked up to this girl with peach hair and taking her by the chin, looked straight into her eyes. 
to which she became very embarrassed and asked how he could say such things in broad daylight. The boy immediately looked into her eyes and complimented her that no one in this world could compare with her in beauty. Then suddenly his compliments were interrupted by an alarm bug. He warned that he did not have enough time for this. The main character thought about it and answered the system that it was right. It really was. And he added that it simply might not be enough for eight beauties. To which the bug explained that the boy had already passed the test. Therefore, after three minutes, he will be teleported back. He was very surprised that it was only three minutes. After all, he hasn't spent enough time here. After which the main character turned to the ladies with a request. They were ready to listen to the guy. He asked for advice on how to make a woman happy if she is crying or tired, for example. One of the girls advised me to cook something delicious for someone who is crying or wants to calm down. The second advised the boy to buy that girl some beautiful handbag. The third offered to buy a beautiful, elegant outfit, some clothes. The girls offered to give her money or give her cosmetics. He didn't like any of the options offered yet. One of them got angry thinking that he was going to find another wife. They immediately got angry with him and everyone began to approach him with anger on their faces. The main character no longer knew where to go. He became a little embarrassed and knitted his eyebrows. The boy picked up a book that appeared from somewhere. She shone in his hands. He read what was written on the cover of the book. Tanny and 36 beauties. At this time, an adult woman entered the room. She asked how he could forget the books that he himself wrote. Tanny and 36 beauties. Synchronization, 64%. The main character grabbed the book tightly and exclaimed that this was a real treasure. The author of this book is the best. The signaling bug announced that he would be transferred to the main world and signaled the boy to get ready. Alan turned to the girls and said that he didn't want to say goodbye to them, but he hoped that fate would bring them together, to which the ladies replied that they did not understand what he was talking about. They all looked at him as if waiting for an answer, and then the main character, smiling, seemed to begin to disappear. It glowed with a blue transparent light. A rainbow of blue and white rays stretched from the boy towards the sky. The girls were left thinking, not understanding what had happened. Alan sat in the lotus position with his eyes closed. He was in a green meadow on a clear sunny day, and he meditated calmly and measuredly. The main character realized that he had finally moved. He seemed a little tired of those circumstances, and the girl in pink continued to cry bitter tears. She had already cried a whole river, and all the time she lamented that the boy had deceived her, and she just doesn't want to live. No one could calm the girl down, even her little animals and vases and sunflowers. Alan wondered if all the system functions were unlocked. Having become interested in the siren bug, to which the system replied that it is, everything is on the move, to which the boy was happy and decided to check whether what he read about in the book would work. The main character approached the girl in a pink robe. He decided to use all the methods he could find to calm her down. And kneeling down in front of the crying girl, he asked the son not to cry anymore. Extending his hand to the lady, he continued to calm her down, explaining that the girl's eyes would swell up if she didn't stop. They were in the same estate with the girl. Nearby, there was a site where the boy was tested. The girl in pink slowly calmed down. She looked at him with her big eyes, not realizing that he was calming her down. The main character explained that he did not intend to offend the girl. And in the meantime, he chose the skill of seduction. He asked her to show her some popular outfits, and hoping that she wouldn't mind, he began to show a whole collection of what he considered to be wonderful outfits. Meanwhile, all the students and teachers gathered near the monitor were watching the boy. A man who liked to look in the mirror noticed that these clothes looked very strange, and I decided that no one could like her at all. One of them suggested looking at the skirt, which seemed too short to him. The second guy thought that the master would probably reject his offer. The girl in pink immediately cheered up. She was surprised that it was all for her. And I wondered if the main character was really trying to analyze what she might like throughout the whole ordeal. She concluded that this is a serious approach. The man looking in the mirror was very surprised. He began to get much angrier now. Alan, putting his hands on his hips, asked the girl if she wanted to try on all these outfits. He looked at her with interest, after which the girl first asked why he decided to give her this outfit. She was very thoughtful, and I was even a little worried. The girl blushed a little, not understanding what was happening. Then the main character approached her 
and holding her cheek with his hand, promised to tell the whole world later, and then she would definitely understand everything. He admitted that he had made a mistake, explaining that he should not have behaved that way, and he very sincerely and politely asked for forgiveness. There was sincerity and remorse on his face, and everyone standing in front of the monitor looked at his sincere apology. Then, the girl was very happy, and she said that right now she would be happy to go change clothes, and she asked the boy to wait for her so that he wouldn't go anywhere. To which the boy responded positively, after which Alan tilted his head down. He covered his face with his hand and closed his eyes. The boy smiled secretly to himself, and he realized that everything worked out for him. This scheme towards the girl worked. And then I thought how good it would be if this also worked with Immortal Masters. The guy looking in the mirror immediately rejoiced at the main character's thoughts. He started rubbing his hands, and all his friends thought that they had exposed him to obscene thoughts. And the notification bug, in turn, confirmed the loading of the dressing room. The girl had already put on the first clothes offered, and she went up to the guy to show himself. He answered somewhat dryly, and he hasn't looked at the girl yet. His gaze was somewhat gloomy at first. The girl came closer and asked what she looked like, and she explained to the main character that this was the first time she had put on something like this. The boy finally turned his head, looking at the transformed girl. She asked why he was silent, and he patted his now more joyful eyes. Alan showed class. The girl pressed her hands to her chest, a little embarrassed. The boy, in turn, also held his hand in his hand, deeply thinking about something. He reassured the girl by complimenting her that she looked pretty good, and he offered to try on other outfits. The girl was very happy. A smile appeared on her face, much wider than before. She agreed with pleasure and went to change clothes. At this time, the boy was waiting for the girl and thought about the fact that she and Ayla had similar figures. The main character wondered what the fiery girl would look like in these clothes. The girl had already changed her clothes and came out to show off her new outfit. She was a little embarrassed, explaining to the boy that this skirt was too short. He threatened to beat him up, to which Alan replied to the girl that it really does look strange. Then, she changed her clothes and showed the next outfit, a beautiful red shirt and a short black skirt. The guy immediately appreciated this outfit. Then, the girl changed her clothes again. These clothes were also too tight, to which the boy also replied that it was just great. Then the next one, again a skirt and a short jacket. She has seriously angered the main character. He admitted that the girl looked just great, and he showed the class his thumb. Anger points plus 5,000, anger points plus 3,689, anger points plus. She turned to Alan again holding many bags of outfits in her hands, and she asked if she could take it all, to which the boy responded approvingly. He already stretched out two hands to show two classes, only for the girl to calm down and leave him alone. With a satisfied smile on her face, she thanked the boy from the bottom of her heart. The trace of bitter tears seemed to be wiped away. She ran up to Alan and threw herself on his neck. The girl admitted that she really liked him, and she was eternally grateful to him. After that, the guy and the girl left the huge bright room. The girl began to tell the main character that since he gave her so many beautiful clothes, she has something for him too. And she led the boy down the steps behind her. The animals running next to the girl opened the door for her. They were true helpers of their mistress. Alan thought about it. The gift is very good, especially if something is really useful and necessary. To which the girl, as if reading his thoughts, said that she would give him a very good, useful, necessary thing. The animals immediately closed the curtains from the camera leading to the monitor, explaining to viewers that the video is not free. Viewing is for non-commercial purposes only. The students at the monitors were upset that they weren't even allowed to see how lucky the main character really was. Surely a girl's gift is something. Meanwhile, the students continued to analyze what had happened. They thought that the test was not that difficult and they decided that they could do it too. In front of us is a large, beautiful, very bright room. She was all pink. The girl asked the boy to wait a second. In the middle of the room, there was a small bed, neatly covered with a pink blanket. The girl went to one of her closets, and she opened the top shelf. She rummaged around on the shelf for something for a long time, until she screamed with joy that she found it. While the main character was waiting patiently for her, 
Sitting on a chair over a cup of tea, the girl was already approaching with some object in her hands. She explained that she got this thing from her mother. Then, she carefully opened the small box and continued to explain that she no longer needed it, so she wanted to give it to Alan. When she opened the box, everything around her began to glow. This ring is called the Ocean of a Hundred Rivers. It eliminates the oppression caused by the opponent's spiritual techniques. This is a saint-level magic weapon. Normally, a higher level of cultivation is required to use it, but this ring received her mother's blessing, so all restrictions were lifted. The main character, when he saw such a valuable thing, sincerely thanked the girl for such a generous gift, agreeing to willingly accept it, after which the girl blushed a little and hesitated. She wanted to say something else to the boy, but could not start. He turned to her and decided to help, explaining that they were now friends and she could safely tell him directly what she wanted. Hearing what Alan told her, the girl covered her mouth with her hand. She didn't expect the boy to call her just a friend. Does he really think so? After which she told him that she was just about to ask if he wanted to be friends with her. He answered as if a little confused, that suddenly he was in a hurry, to which the girl on the contrary let him know that she was very glad to be his friend. And reaching across the table, she took the boy's hands, showing a sign of her friendship. Then the girl took out something and raised her hand in front of her. It was some kind of blue small thing, like a transparent crystal shining in blue. Taking this crystal with two fingers, the girl handed it to the boy. He spun in the air, illuminating everything around him, after which he seemed to touch the boy's chest. It was as if he had penetrated him. He was enveloped in tongues of blue and white rays. It lit up like this crystal with bright blue lightning. She explained to the main character that in the future, if he encounters danger, he should say her name to himself three times. If there is water nearby, then she will immediately come to his aid. And so, we are transported to the room where all the students were looking at the monitor. The boy slowly, leisurely walked down the steps. He walked confidently in their direction. He has already been transported to another dimension, to where he was before. And he slowly approached the manager. He was immediately greeted by a gray-haired man. With a shout of congratulations for successfully passing the test, the manager shook hands with the main character, explaining that he opened his eyes and he just didn't think they had a treasure like Alan. He decided to immediately tell everyone such good news as this. His eyes began to shine. He shook the boy's hand again. His smile shone brightly and broadly on his face. He kept telling the boy how lucky he was, really very lucky. In turn, one of the guys was already approaching them with his friends. Asking if this is not just an accident, he thinks that the owner of the circle was simply in a good mood and therefore let him go. To which the other replied that hiding a couple of outfits in order to butter her up was mean on the part of the boy. To which Alan replied that he gave the girl a gift after the test. Therefore, he cannot call him a scoundrel. The main character replied that if they did not believe that he managed to cope with the test, then they should try to pass it themselves. Anger points plus. The guy who likes to look in the mirror replied that, who knows, maybe he has some kind of relationship with the owner of the circle. A girl named Lucy has already joined in. She shouted at the guy, raising her voice, asking him to shut up. She continued to explain as she came closer that if he thought he could say such things about this girl, how could he even call himself a student? The girl said that they had all been watching the main character all that time, and there could be no room for doubt. Doesn't this guy understand that he is wrong? One of the friends of the man who had an affair with Lucy began to calm the guy down. If he continues to argue, he will still end up guilty and it's not worth it, so stop bickering." To which the man decided to listen to his friend. And lowering his head down, he admitted that he was wrong. Meanwhile, Lucy approached Alan and congratulated him on passing the test and on passing the exam to become an internal student. She promised to keep a close eye on him during the upcoming assessment. After which the main character thanked Mrs. Lucy, explaining that the lady probably has her own views on him after all, she even stood up for him. Therefore, it is worth taking a closer look at it. To which the guy who loves to look in the mirror grimaced and muttered that his luck would not last forever. He called Alan a phony. Having developed anger points, plus, the others asked the boy what he was doing with the girl in that room. One of the students asked the main character if he was free today. Wouldn't he like to look at the stars with her? We already have another dimension before us. 
the abode of four female mentors. Ayla, in turn, was already going down the steps, approaching her sisters. She let me know that she was already back. Florence noticed that the fiery girl's face was shining with joy. She was somehow joyful and thoughtful. The sister asked what happened, probably something good. Then the fiery girl answered her sister that she saw that girl in a pink robe, and she was in despair. After this, of course, she will not be in a bad mood. To which Florence asked what Ayla was doing in the spiritual development hall. The girl replied that she looked like the main character. But then she stopped abruptly. To which Florence made a remark to the fiery girl to finish speaking, since she started telling. Is it possible that she already has secrets from her own sister? She continued to pull the fiery girl into conversation. To which Ayla explained that this guy decided to take part in her test for no reason. And she thought that he would simply die there. And since the elder sister herself asked her to become his mentor, she had no other choice. Then, Florence asked if at her age such thoughts were the norm. Then why did she blush so much? Isla kept translating the topic, then decided to take a hot shower. To relieve all your fatigue and worries, she was now quite rested and could continue to do her planned activities. The girl walked around the estate, singing a cheerful song. She was really in high spirits. Isla had some kind of book in her hand. She was heading towards a table, near which there were several chairs, and then she stopped near one of the chairs, with a book in her hands and a cheerful song on her lips. Then, suddenly, the main character approached her, and he turned to the master. The fiery girl was frightened by his appearance, understanding what it was. She explained to the boy that she didn't do anything, and immediately hiding the book, she said to forget about it. Alan immediately snatched the book from her hands and, running away, asked if she was writing another manual on martial arts. He asked to take a look and in turn took the book without asking, at which the fiery girl got angry and she ordered the immediate return of the thing that belonged to her. The main character opened the book on the first page and noticed some kind of drawing there, after which Ayla became seriously angry and snatched her notes from his hands. She did not expect such impudence from him. Alan answered her that the girl was behaving strangely, and she's as good at drawing as she is at writing practice guides. And the fiery girl in turn pressed the book to herself and replied that she was not very good at drawing. Definitely not very good. And she lowered her head, blushing a little. To which the boy asked why. And then Ayla abruptly changed the topic, congratulating him on passing the test and passing the exam for internal students. To which the main character said that news in the sanctuary spreads at the speed of light and he would like to personally talk about it. She asked in surprise whether she really wanted to tell him personally. Alan wondered why his master was stuttering so much today. He turned around and headed towards the door, and the fiery girl reassured him that he could no longer worry about their dispute. Then she looked at the boy, and with great surprise I asked what he was going to do, and he, in turn, asked about what dispute. It turns out he really forgot about it, Isla asked if he was in too much of a hurry, to which he replied that it was not fast. He usually gets it done much faster than that. The boy, already half undressed, jumped into the pool. The fiery girl began to say that for starters, first you need matchmaking. Matchmakers. Parental permission. She spoke about this very embarrassedly. The main character was already swimming at full speed in the pool. He dived under the water and asked what the fiery girl said. Isla replied that she was ready to accept defeat, especially since he had done so much for her, after which she said that she was his master, and the love between a master and a student is somehow… Then it fell silent again. She continued to explain that she simply needed to consult and talk with her older sister, and, in principle, with the rest of the sisters too. The main character after the pool continued his swimming in the pond sharing with my mentor what a treasure this pond is. In just a couple of seconds, a few moments, he stopped feeling tired. The boy smiled contentedly, drops of water flowed down him. Ayla looked at Alan in surprise. She couldn't understand. She told him about one thing, and he told her something completely different. The boy slowly emerged from the water. Thin streams of clear liquid slowly flowed down his body. The fiery girl looking at him, felt that his body was beating much faster than before. She couldn't understand what was happening to her, and she continued to look at the main character with interest. Suddenly, Florence approached them. The girl mentor asked if they were doing practices, after which, explaining to the boy that he had just passed the test 
She suggested that he rest a little. Ayla immediately turned to her sister and asked her if Florence was looking for her. The fiery girl shuddered in surprise, to which the sister replied that she was looking for her and the main character. She looked at them both sweetly. She wanted to say, or rather remind, that the day after tomorrow, the ceremony would take place, to which the boy asked if he needed to somehow prepare for the ceremony. Florence reassured the main character, explaining that it was not necessary to prepare, but there was something he should know and remember. Alan picked up the notebook that belonged to Ayla, a pen, and prepared to write down. The fiery girl asked the boy not to leave through this notebook under any circumstances. She became embarrassed again, blushing a little. Florence, leading the boy along, began to explain to him what would happen at the ceremony. She said that on this day and at this hour, the masters of all six sects would gather. There will be many of them, and it will be very difficult to get along with them. She spoke in all seriousness. The teacher continued to explain that their sanctuary consisted of six gates, an outer gate, a temple, and land, and they managed to maintain a fragile peace thanks to backbreaking work. And this is very difficult, and it requires a lot of patience. Previously, the four masters refused to accept students, but the main character was able to pass the test before the official ceremony. Florence held in her hands a pipe filled with aromatic tobacco. This was her favorite annoying habit, she very calmly and measuredly explained the whole point to the boy while exhaling thin streams of white smoke. She wondered if they would see anything interesting the day after tomorrow. And then she looked at the boy. And then, after some time, that long-awaited day of the ceremony arrived. Little by little, people began to gather at the indicated place. There were more and more of them. Various masters gathered. They were very strange, strict, and very serious. One of the arrivals, a very strict man, turned to two guys standing not far from him with an order to go with him, to which one of them replied that they were not accepted as students. The second one quietly told him that, before leaving, his brother told them to keep an eye on the main character. Does he remember this? He, their brother, took a short vacation, and when he returns, he will definitely reward them. After all, he is so cool that he joined the Tiandao Alliance, and he is sure that his brother has a strong patron, so Alan doesn't have much time left. Even before the ceremony, their brother, a man who loved to look in the mirror, convinced them to just wait and see for themselves. Therefore, one of them continued, it is worth waiting for him. After all, as he put it, they can start acting today. Alan may have been able to interest them, but he will have to meet with the leaders of other sects. The leader of the Thunder sect, for example, is not so easy to fool. Meanwhile, a man's foot had already stepped onto one of the steps into the huge room. There were many of them. Apparently, the first person to step on this step was their leader, their leader. He looked very menacing and impressive. A whole retinue of people walked behind him. This was just one of the sects. Wood sect Samuel, followed by the second metal sect buddy, then the Williamsland sect. Following them came the Patrick Water sect, and the Bethany Wind sect, the only one led by a girl. The last to bring up the rear of all those who came was the Jameson Thunder sect. All those who came entered one by one into a large, bright room. There were tables and chairs in a circle in it. The head of the Thunder sect immediately sat down in one of the chairs. He sat with his arms crossed over his chest, and he cast his stern, very unpleasant gaze at everyone present in the hall. This man named Jameson was approached by the head of the Bethany Wind sect, she asked the gentleman why every time they meet, he has such a dissatisfied face. Is it really possible that the food in their sect is so bad that it affects his well-being? After which the girl continued to provoke the man by offering to lend him a couple of their excellent cooks, to which the man calmly replied that they had to travel a long way for today's event. Therefore, he suggested that we put jokes aside. Bethany, in turn, asked what was so unusual about the ceremony of accepting a new student as immortals. The last time this happened was quite a long time ago. Jameson said that the main character has already made a splash. Even those of their sect who live in the very depths of the sanctuary territory know his name. Sooner or later, such a person will bring them trouble. And so, at the beginning of the ceremony, not only members of different sects arrived, but also immortals. The first to enter was the older sister, Monica. She was all in a purple robe, as always graceful and overly serious. 
The leader of the Thunder sect immediately connected his hands with one another, lowered his head slightly, and greeted the immortals. All four girls, led by their older sister, walked down the steps to the ceremony room. The first thing the fiery girl thought was that it was this old man again. The first thing she looked at was Jameson. Florence, in turn, hoped that the main character would cope with everything today at this ceremony. Raya, as usual, sat down on a chair with a light and mysterious smile, having noticed and thought a lot of things, but without saying a word. And Monica, in a stern voice, invited everyone to sit down in their places. She stood as if at the head of the ceremony, in a very revealing purple robe. And now, it was her turn to sit down at the table. This girl looked like the queen of the ceremony. She sat down on a chair, as if on a royal throne, which was made of pure gold. And so, all the sect leaders and the four immortal girls were already sitting in their designated places. Monica began to say that she never liked excessive formality. Therefore, we must discard all this. She continued that if it weren't for the sect leader's need to have the sect leaders certify the new disciples' acceptance, they wouldn't have forced them to come all this way. And now, our famous protagonist was quietly descending the steps of the main room. The boy walked with a very respectable gait. His long black hair cascaded over his shoulders. He tilted his head a little as he entered the room, as if he was thinking. Alan stood up in front of all the sect leaders and the four immortals, and greeted them by clasping his hands together and lowering his head slightly. One of his mentors, Florence, explained to the main character that despite the fact that the unofficial leader of the sanctuary is the elder sister, the six sects have their own autonomy, and she really hopes that at the ceremony Alan will be able to hide his clumsiness from them and will not cause them trouble. The fiery girl in turn thought that old Jameson, deep down in his soul, wanted to get to us, but every time she challenged him, he refused. He's just a cowardly, bluffing old man. For some reason, the girl named Bethany sighed strangely, and she also looked at the old man. She answered Ayla that he was definitely her type. Maybe they would get married. Of course, she said this sarcastically. She continued asking the gray-haired man if he had anyone, and she offered to join her. The girl promised that he would live without any hassle, to which one of the sect leaders sitting next to him was very surprised. He almost dropped his jaw when he heard this. Here the guy in the hat, Patrick, intervened in the conversation, looking at the main character. He said that a man should be tanned to emphasize his masculinity. And this guy has too light and delicate skin. It shouldn't be this way. To which Bethany replied that in her opinion, he looks better than the students of his sect. And even more so, she likes the fair ones better. Then Jameson suddenly shouted. O began to cover everyone's mouths. The main character immediately turned his head in his direction. He looked at him very seriously, not understanding why the man was shouting so loudly. The white-haired old man continued to say that in this majestic hall, they are in front of the head of the sanctuary. How can they afford to behave like this? He clenched his teeth, showing his nervousness and his displeasure. The main character, in turn, began to smile. He thought it was in his spirit. No wonder he immediately liked this man. He definitely got it right with this one. Then, Monica addressed everyone. She said that she would only be glad if they said what they thought. After all, everyone sitting here is family. A gray-haired man named Jameson rose from his chair and approached the boy. He approached him as quickly as possible. Apparently, the man was impatient to express his opinion. He began to say that their sex endlessly respect immortals. They are always wary of people of unknown origin who could tarnish the reputation of immortals. Alan thought that this man looked like the one he was told about. He immediately knitted his eyebrows. The man turned to the main character. He started the conversation by hearing how he managed to climb the heavenly steps and even destroy the formation of immortals. And besides this, he managed to pass the test. He continued that he still couldn't understand one thing. How did a low-level student manage to do all this? To which the boy replied to the gray-haired man that he did not understand him. Then Florence intervened, thinking that the boy meant that the gray-haired man was cheating. He even suspected the immortals of helping him. The fiery mentor added that she would rather be surprised if the elder did not think so. Jameson immediately fell silent, twisting his angry face. He cast a contemptuous glance at the girls. Taking advantage of the short pause, Monica said that today everyone had a chance to meet Alan, and they can dispel their own doubts. The girl even got up from her chair to ask the gray-haired man if he was ready to check it out, to which the gray-haired old man replied that everything was in order, 
and he did not think that any checks were necessary in this situation. After all, the pressure is too great, and he added that perhaps a proposal for additional verification would be an insult to the Immortals. The main character assured the Immortals and Sectmasters that he would not let them down, to which Jameson immediately cast a stern, serious look at the boy. Florence also glanced at Alan. She sized up the boy, thinking how good this guy was. The gray-haired man turned around and said that he was looking forward to the boy's results. Elder sister Monica also looked at the main character. She was quite thoughtful. Florence stretched and smiled a little. She already seemed a little tired. The girl asked if the ceremony was already over. What are they going to do next? Maybe play mahjong or say goodbye right away. The evil old man immediately snapped that he was not going to play mahjong with her. She was a fox. We must leave already. In front of us is the same huge multi-story building where the ceremony took place. The gray-haired man had already quietly gone out into the street. He turned around at the call. The old man was called by the girl, Bethany. She asked why Jameson was in such a hurry to leave them all, to which the man asked why she even cared. And he cast a contemptuous, evil glance at her. After which the girl explained to the man that she knew how much he liked the bet. And she has a pretty good feeling about this guy. She looked Jameson straight in the eyes and offered him a bet, to which the gray-haired man thought that the girl wanted to get his spiritual pearl, and he gave her an even more contemptuous look. Bethany replied that the man had several of them, and she only had one. Therefore, he will not lose anything in this dispute. Then, Jameson wondered if the girl really thought that the main character would pass the test. The head of the sect, Bethany, after thinking a little, replied that, who knows, it's worth watching this. And leaning a little closer to the gray-haired man, she whispered that at least they would just have fun. Let's go back a little half a month before the internal test for the students. A large chariot raced across the skies, drawn by three beautiful snow-white horses. A man's voice came from the chariot. This was the main character. He said that this place is similar to Sichuan. Florence was nearby. She didn't quite understand what kind of place this was when she asked the boy about it. Alan explained to the girl that this was the place he had long wanted to go to. There's a great climate there. In summer, it is hot and humid, just like in a sauna. All four mentors were in a chariot drawn by three white horses. Monica asked if the locals liked spicy food, to which the main character was very surprised and asked how his master knew about this, to which the girl replied very smartly and logically, that it is very reasonable to eat spicy food to cope with such a climate. Alan appreciated such a subtle and sharp mind of his older sister, his mentor. The boy remembered Monica's words when he clearly heard her say the atomic bomb. She promised, if possible, to let him experience the power of the atomic bomb. To which the boy replied that it was quite possible. After all, the system cannot reveal the real identity of someone, so his assumptions may well turn out to be true. The fiery girl, meanwhile, sat down next to Alan and I asked why he froze. She asked him not to forget to come to him later to discuss something, and she hit him on the back with her fist, to which the main character replied that if he were an ordinary person, then with this blow she would have torn all the organs. La closed her eyes, and getting a little angry, she asked the boy not to talk nonsense. She kept wondering if this guy had forgotten about their bet. After all, several days have passed, and he has never spoken about it. He's probably mocking him, Anger points plus 3,000, plus 2,000, plus Alan couldn't understand what was happening to him. Florence, in turn, turned to the boy. She said that a few days ago he asked her to teach him the art of illusion, so she prepared something for him. But he will have to work very hard, and if the boy doesn't practice, she will certainly punish him. He answered positively, of course. Imagining how Florence would punish him, he promised to try his best, and he hopes that this is not the punishment he thinks about. Florence turned to the fiery girl. She couldn't figure out what was wrong. Ayla sat next to the boy, very angry and upset, but she decided not to show it in front of her sisters. And immediately raising her head, she began to calm the girl down, saying that everything was fine. The little sister looked carefully at the fiery girl. She grinned, apparently noticing something about her sister. Florence asked if they had not yet resolved the issue that they discussed a couple of days ago near the pond. To which Ayla quickly replied that everything was fine and they had already discussed everything. 
The main character couldn't understand what they were talking about. The fiery girl turned to him and said exactly, Alan. And then he finally remembered that he and Ayla had recently argued about something. The boy seemed to have been electrocuted. After all, he really somehow forgot about it. He approached the fiery girl and said that everything was right, they made a bet, and the mentor lost. Isla became very angry. Her indignation knew no bounds. Alan asked the mentor sisters for help so that they could protect her as quickly as possible. To which Monica said that being the teacher of the main character, she must accept her defeat with dignity. The fiery girl replied that she accepted her defeat. She immediately calmed down after her older sister's words. Meanwhile, the beautiful heavenly horses were already flying up to the ground, and the bright trough of one of them was already the first to step on the ground. The huge chariot stopped in a wonderful, beautiful place. Tall cherry blossoms grew above the wide room. Florence turned to the main character, and Isla, so that they would certainly not forget to discuss their dispute a little later. They were all quite thoughtful. After the carriage stopped, they began to slowly open the curtains and get out. Raya still remained in the chariot. She opened the curtain on her side. Monica didn't come out either. She went to the window where Raya was sitting and called out to her, turning to her sister. The middle sister immediately turned to the eldest and replied that she was fine, to which Monica said, of course, and thought about it herself. After all, Raya has always been very gentle, sensitive, and amazing. Meanwhile, the fiery girl was already chasing the main character with her weapon. The boy ran away from her as fast as he could. Isla warned the boy to stop talking nonsense, to which he asked her, since she admitted defeat, not to beat him anymore. The mentors looked at this picture from the side. They thought these two were on to something. Florence approached Raya. There was clearly something wrong with the girl. She hugged her carefully, asking what's going on. Then the older sister came up to her and extended her hand using some kind of force. It was as if Raya was slowly becoming covered in ice. Florence realized that her sister was having an attack. She was somehow different, and it seemed like it started to freeze. Florence hugged her sister and Monica explained to her that she would accompany the girl to the Dongtan Valley. And Florence will stay here to take care of Isla and Alan. To which my sister agreed. And the elder sister immediately took the girl into her arms and carried her into the valley. Florence, in turn, headed towards the sweet couple, who were chasing each other as if playing catch-up. Entering the main pavilion, the sister asked Ayla to calm down, to which the fiery girl told Florence to let her go, as she had to kill Alan. The girl with pink hair reminded her sister not to forget the purpose of their visit, to which the fiery girl wondered if the main character was not strong enough. If he passed the test, would a regular internal test make any difference? Isn't it better to treat this trip as just a vacation? After all, everyone is already tired of constant stress. After which Ayla turned around and asked where everyone else had gone. She didn't see the other sisters. To which Florence began to explain that Raya had just recently had an attack on the street. She sadly lowered her head. The fiery girl immediately became worried. And a little angry, asked if she had been sent home. To which Florence replied very thoughtfully that this was indeed the case. The main character carefully approached the fiery girl. He turned to the master, deciding to ask her something. He asked where the rest of the mentors had gone. To which Florence quickly replied that they had urgent matters to attend to. Alan, holding his chin with one hand, became very thoughtful. After all, they don't tell him anything. They just beat around the bush. And these girls and sisters behave very strangely, the main character concluded. Then the boy clapped his hands. He thought that the senior teacher must be busy with important work, and the third mentor is her right hand, so she should be next to her. To which the girls agreed with him. Isla abruptly grabbed the boy's hand, explaining that they had something to do. She held it out somewhere, and the main character got a little angry. He understood that something was probably wrong here, and he would soon find out exactly what. The fiery girl turned around and quickly walked forward, and she asked Alan to move because he was too slow. Florence, meanwhile, began to think that such attacks from her sister were their common secret, and then she silently asked the boy for forgiveness, explaining this by saying that they have their own reasons for this. A whole big beautiful city stretched out in front of us. The houses stood one to one. The weather was absolutely wonderful. The fiery girl stood in the middle of the pavilion. She seemed to be blocking the boy's path. Alan stood opposite her. They looked at each other intently, 
with complete seriousness. Apparently both were thinking about what to say. The fiery girl asked to skip the empty talk and proceed to the main plan. To which the boy, looking straight into her eyes, answered with all sternness and seriousness that he would do as the master ordered. Ayla pulled herself together and focused on her energy. She held out two fingers in front of her. They glowed with bright yellow fire. The girl seemed to be spinning in chains that, with a ringing sound, reflected the yellow glow of a bright, burning flame. After which she explained to the main character that she had just bound her powers with these chains. That's why they are now equal. And she reminds him that she does not advise him to use the tricks with which he managed to win before. Then the alarm bug addressed the main character. He offered to give him new abilities, so she just won't notice it. To which the boy ordered Siri not to help this time, but to watch him on the sidelines. The system responded that Ayla is known as the Sword Goddess. She is the strongest swordswoman in the world. Is he confident in his decision? The main character told Siri with complete determination and confidence that he was more confident than ever. The fiery girl, in turn, had already taken up her fiery weapon. Ayla, meanwhile, decided that this was her gift for the boy. He will not use the siren bug. She handed him a huge, heavy sword. It was quite impressive and completely glowed with flames. The fiery girl handed Alan the Tianmu sword and asked him never to let go of this weapon. The boy was completely enveloped in fiery rays. The flames played on it in different colors. Holding this weapon in his hands, the main character thought how heavy this sharp sword is. Florence, in turn, thought that this was some kind of trick of her sister. And the fiery girl immediately lit up with her burning gaze and asked the boy if he was ready for battle. He, in turn, tightened his grip on the hilt of the fiery heavy sword. And holding out his weapon in front of him, he asked the girl to begin their fight. The boy immediately jumped up, as if flying high into the air. There were sounds of struggle, explosions, fire, bright colors of flame. The fiery girl Ayla jumped towards the enemy, also rising into the air to be on par with the main character. She waved her weapon as hard as she could, drawing a huge arc of fire in front of the boy. He jumped to the side, or rather, he was thrown back by the powerful blow of the girl. He was surprised at how hard she started the battle. The girl became even more aggressive. She raised her sword and swung it again in an arc in front of the boy. Alan responded immediately. He tried to defend himself with his heavy sword, holding it out in front of him. But it was not there. A wave of fire from a blow from a sword pushed the main character far back again. But the boy did not give up. He tightened his grip on his sword and prepared to repel the attack. The fire girl swung her weapon again. She drew a new semicircle without ceasing her attack. The boy thought about it. He finally decided to act. After all, he is also quite strong. After another attack from the girl, he dodged a fiery arc with lightning speed after a powerful blow from his sword. But having risen to his full height, the boy opened his eyes wide. He looked forward with great horror, and with a cry to save me, he ran away. It was as if a powerful, bright conflagration was chasing him. The crackling of fire could be heard all around. The boy, as if a little fried, screamed for help. He ran like lightning, and the fiery girl was above him, at the very top, flying over his head with her powerful, strong weapon. Isla exclaimed that each person has his own sword, and each sword accordingly, after pausing, she jumped. Your man, she finished the sentence. And the girl approached the main character, delivering another powerful blow. Alan displayed his weapon in self-defense. He held it as tightly as possible and tried to fend off the girl's blow. But he himself had not yet had time to attack. She explained to the boy that the strength of the sword does not depend on the level of his development, but on the strength of his heart. She tried to teach the main character to use weapons from the heart. The boy deftly dodged the enemy's new blow. The fiery girl's eyes immediately changed their mood. They miscalculated a little fear. The boy deftly dodged and began to attack. He swung his sharp weapon, and now a fiery bright arc appeared from his side. He rushed at the girl, wielding his sword. But in her eyes there was still not fear, but a readiness to dodge the enemy's attack. Which is what she did. Ayla dodged it very cleverly. She thought that the boy must have read her book. And the main character, in turn, noted that if not for his tricks, she would have killed him long ago. She tried to explain to Alan that although she gave him the sword, only the sword can choose its owner. The boy lay on the asphalt, looking up at her. Raising her leg over the lying boy, 
the fiery girl said that what he had just demonstrated proved the fact that he was simply not worthy of him. The girl raised her leg as high as possible, shouted that she had strength, and stones began to fly around. They flew, falling into fragments on the asphalt. Ayla made it clear to the boy that even from their first meeting, she understood that the guy was not strong enough, to which the main character wondered whether she had exactly equalized their strengths. After all, the girl is much stronger. She continued to explain that, after all, he became the only one of the hosts who understood that one could not rely on just one system all the time. Then, Alan instantly rose to his feet. He took a fighting stance. The fiery girl stood opposite, ready for his attack. The boy coughed. He didn't look very fresh. There were red abrasions everywhere on his face. Isla continued to explain that her sword was only meant for those who could wield it. She lost her temper with rage and indignation. And again waving her weapon, she asked the boy if he even knew how to hold a sword in his hands. The main character immediately fell to one knee. He again deftly dodged the girl's powerful blow, after which he concluded that although her powers are limited, she really wields a sword simply excellent. He grabbed his weapon, and the fiery girl, in turn, jumped into the air again. She pointed her sword blazing with fire directly at the boy. She said that Alan must fight with all his might. Until death, this is what it means to be a swordmaster. She jumped and began to fall down, striking with her sword. There was an explosion and fire crackled. Sparks flew around. The power and strength of her blows made itself felt. The boy barely had time to dodge such powerful attacks. Alan thought that the girl and the sword seemed to become one. And the girl is incredible even without her true power. She flew up to the main character from behind and asked why he was suddenly thinking so sharply. The boy threw a very strange look at the fiery girl. Apparently he was up to something new this time. But the girl, with all her dexterity and skills, delivered a powerful kick to the boy's body. She advised him to concentrate. Alan flew a couple of meters to the side after which the sword began to fly out of his hands. There was a roar again, a noise like an explosion from impacts. Stones scattered all over the place. The boy's weapon spun in the air. It seemed to split into two, spinning around itself with such force and speed, she gave him a scornful look, as if she saw in front of her not a formidable strong hero, but an ordinary person. The boy's bladed weapon flew up, turning over. It glowed like a fire in the night although it was a clear sunny day. At this moment, her weapon also sparkled with a yellow-red glow against the blue sky. The fiery girl said that if this had been a real battle, he would have been dead long ago. The main character fell on the asphalt on all fours. Standing in this position, he coughed violently. Isla came closer and closer to him. She asked the boy to stop pretending because she barely touched him. After which the main character, getting down on one knee and leaning in front of the girl, asked the master to teach him how to fight. The fiery girl looked at him with a knowing look, she thought, and then, after thinking a little, she answered that she would teach him. After all, she was his mentor. And not to kill, but to teach something. Alan looked at his mentor with some interest. She blushed a little, asking what it was in blue. The main character came very close to the girl, to which she became wary, asking what he was up to. The boy approached the fiery girl and carefully took her hand, he looked tenderly into her eyes. Alan was somehow different, gentle, affectionate. He asked the master very politely to teach him. There was a pleading and sincere request in his big eyes. He explained to the girl that her technique was simply incredible. And he really wants, he just desperately wants to learn this as soon as possible. To which the girl replied that first he should practice more, and then, a little later, they can discuss it. Isla thought, why grab someone's hand so suddenly? It's impossible to do that. She became a little embarrassed. The main character, stepping aside, promised his mentor that he would practice a lot to prove to her his seriousness. Alan grabbed the hilt of his fire sword. He pulled once, twice, but it didn't work out that way. The boy couldn't understand. The sword was stuck into the asphalt. This happened after he dropped the weapon from his hands. The guy thought how this could be. His gaze changed again. He knitted his eyebrows. Then, he again made attempts one after another to pull the sword out of the asphalt. But all attempts were in vain. He didn't even move. The guy was just wasting his energy. The fiery girl put her hands on her hips. She concluded that the sword had not yet recognized its owner as the main character. 
the boy was already sweating. He rubbed his forehead with his hand, and he asked the mentor what he should do in this case, to which the girl advised him to prove to his cold steel that he was worthy of it. Alan was quite surprised and even more puzzled. How to prove to the sword that he is worthy of it if the sword did not even move? The main character put his hands on his hips, and he thought about how he could do this. Could it be that flattery will help him in this matter? The fiery girl stretched and told the boy that although she had no doubt that he would lose today, he was still very good, and if the guy reads her manual a couple more times, then maybe he will succeed. She smiled as she said this. The main character, holding his hands behind his back, agreed with the girl. After all, he wanted to learn how to fight with dignity as soon as possible, and to be much stronger than before. At that moment, Ayla was gaining strength and thinking that she, in turn, had a very long journey ahead of her. The girl spun around in the red and yellow flame, deciding to check on her sister, who was having an attack. The boy only managed to glance after her. She rushed off with lightning speed, disappearing into the clear blue sky. Alan looked after the fiery girl, wondering if she understood. His gaze was very serious and thoughtful. Then suddenly his thoughts were interrupted by Florence. She pounced on the boy from behind, hugging his neck. The girl literally hung on his strong male shoulders. To which the main character replied to the mentor so that she should not mock him, because he lost in this battle. Florence, releasing the boy's neck, explained that this sword recognized only three swordmasters. She continued to wonder if this suited the boy. Asking a question with a smile, Alan grabbed his head with one hand. He closed his eyes, explaining to his mentor that he was not feeling well. Then Florence said that the boy had already practiced enough with the sword today. Would he like to practice illusions? The main character wondered, really now. Doesn't it seem to the mentor that the time is not quite right? To which the girl asked what was wrong with him. Or he strained his lower back during training. Alan replied that this might be true. Then Florence, on the contrary, was happy, saying that in this case it was even good. After all, she has many medications to treat any injury. She looked thoughtfully at the tired-looking boy. The mentor decided that now was the time to try her new elixir. And she took out two round golden-colored tablets. The main character immediately thanked his master. It was already dark outside. The time was approaching dark night. After which, thanking Florence again, the boy wished her good night and reassured her that he really felt better. And the boy immediately went into his room and quickly closed the front door. Having closed the door, Alan leaned his back against it and he exhaled as if he was very tired from everything that was happening and from the mentors too. In fact, he was really tired having concluded that the master's illusions were indeed quite strong. The boy thought that a couple more times of such activities, and he would definitely die from anemia. The main character was already blushing from fatigue and overwork. Alan, standing in the middle of the room, looked towards the door. He had the idea that the girl was up to something. Why then was that expression on the face that the mentor had? Here, he didn't even have time to rest a little or think calmly about something, when his thoughts were interrupted by an alarm bug. He reminded the guy about the new mission. The system announced that Mason, the envoy protecting the Holy Land, would be rewarded with 100,000 rage points if the mission was successful. The boy stopped at the phrase, Mason, messenger. She stood thoughtful again. He tried to understand how some messenger could appear out of nowhere. Shouldn't he have come directly to the masters? To which the system explained that he was hiding his identity and presenting himself as an ordinary merchant. He does not want to tell anyone the true purpose of his visit. Alan wondered how it was that even the siren bug did not know its purpose. To which the bug explained that people, like systems, can be unpredictable. The main character immediately asked where his mission would take place. Although he was not particularly happy to get a new building so quickly, the system began synchronizing the mission with the host, notifying that the synchronization was successful. The boy quickly rushed towards a new mission thinking that according to the entries in the book, there are three powerful continents in this world, and Kangming is a holy land, the cradle of freedom. The main character rushed at the speed of the wind. He continued to think along the way that the capital of the continent was ruled by a queen who had been living away from the rest of the world for a long time. And the legend says that the queen used to be merciful. The guy presented this woman in front of him. She was called the White Dove of the Sacred Land. It was as if he saw the queen sitting on a huge throne, and her subjects bowing before her. But one day her character changed dramatically. 
and she closed the gates of her palace. She closed herself off from the outside world, and no one has seen her for the last 15 years. The main character is almost at his destination. He stepped with both feet on the ground. The guy stood on the edge of a huge peak of a high mountain. In front of him lay a village called Lankong. Alan stood on the edge of the stone with his hands on his hips. He thought that if the country is closed from the outside world, then why send messengers? He addressed this question to the siren bug, to which the answer was that the relevant information was not available in the system. Alan realized that this was definitely not good, and he rushed down the cliff towards danger. The boy thought that he had disguised himself and infiltrated them, afraid to reveal his identity. He must have something to hide, if that's the case. He landed somewhere nearby near a large estate. It was still dark outside. There was a bright light shining in the windows of the room. He approached the building. The light completely illuminated the huge house. What happened inside this house? A man was sitting on the floor in the middle of the room. The girl sat next to him, on both sides, clinging to him. One offered the gentleman a drink of wine. The second asked him not to offend them. The girl who offered her master wine insisted that he had promised to do so. The man continued to sit next to the girls and laugh impudently. He was very heavy, one might even say very full. He reassured the girls, asking them not to worry. He promised them to drink all the wine without fail. The girls laughed too, clinging to him more and more tightly. At this time, someone knocked on the door, notifying the gentleman that he was there. The man immediately rose from the floor and walked to the door. Opening it, he saw a girl who knocked. This girl immediately fell to her knees in front of him. In her hands was a bag full of gold coins. She explained to the gentleman that these were all funds raised. She leaned in front of the man, asking him to accept them. The girl submissively, and as if afraid of something, lowered her gaze. After which, the overweight gentleman took the bag of money. He invited the girl to go inside. She, in turn, without looking up at this man, was about to get up. But the gentleman suddenly stopped this girl abruptly. He looked at her strangely, as if he was planning something. The girl continued to sit on her knees in front of him, wondering what it was, why he suddenly changed his mind. After which the man turned to the girl and asked what her name was. He smiled a little. The girl, in turn, also without rising from her knees, introduced herself. Her name was Angelina, to which the man asked the girl if she was married. He continued to look at the girl with some kind of lustful gaze. She answered the gentleman that she was not married and was an orphan. Poor miss, she was even afraid to move. Then the gentleman answered the girl that an orphan is an ideal option. He immediately laughed. He continued that he remembered a maid who was sent here before. Her name was Beatrice. I wonder where she went. To which the girl replied to the gentleman that she had urgent matters, so she asked her to help her. The overweight man reached into the bag, clinking gold coins. He laughed again, fingering the money in his hands, after which the man threw one gold coin in front of the girl, asking to accept it from him as a gift. And he also added that that maid named Beatrice should not come again. Let her mind her own business. That maid's position is now her position. As long as she serves her master well, the girl will not know hardship. To which the girl, raising her head, objected, how is this possible? And explained that this is too much. The man immediately laughed out loud, letting the girl know that this is all nothing. The servant girl thanked the master and even bowed to him, without ceasing to utter words of gratitude. She picked up a gold coin from the floor. Her eyes immediately lit up with great joy. She took the man's hand and continued to thank him. He took the girl's hand in return. Holding her hand in hers, the coin stood shining with golden rays on the girl's fragile palm. The man bent down in front of the girl's face. He smiled with all his teeth, saying how white her skin was, like fresh milk, and the night was in full swing. There were no plans to vacation in this estate yet. Street lamps also shone brightly at the doorstep of the house. The main character was sitting on one of the thick branches of a large tall tree. It grew opposite the estate. The boy continued to watch what was happening. He put his head on his hand and got a little bored, but suddenly Alan noticed something. The girl who brought the bag of money taking the coin given to her, went about her business, quickly leaving the master. He, in turn, still stood on the threshold, watching the servant girl go. Standing nearby were two men, his subjects. The gentleman noticed that this girl had character, 
and he liked her, the main character thought. He turned to the siren bug to have Suri scan his security levels. The system responded in the affirmative, and she started scanning. And at the end, she announced that the security level was 72%. One man from the security has a fifth level, and he also has a fifth. The two masters on either side of the master are in that master's realm. Alan folded his arms in front of him on his chest and wondered how masters of such a high level could agree to serve someone. To which the alarm bug explained to the boy that quite often material interest comes before self-esteem. The main character leaned a little towards the system. He said that he had noticed some changes in it. The boy came even closer to Siri. He smiled at the alarm bug as sincerely as possible. To which the system replied that after he gave her a name, she thought that a more friendly way of communication would be much more suitable. To which Alan completely agreed with the system. And he advised me to keep it up. The boy began to jump from the tree branch, planning to look at that orphan girl who was already leaving the master. The system asked him about the mission in this case. The main character is already on the ground. He explained to the system that there were strong masters around those men, so completing the mission would not be so easy. A green fluffy forest stretched out in front of us, in front of which a clear blue river gurgled. At the bottom of a shallow river, right next to the bank, someone's gentle hands were splashing. It was that girl. She sat on the shore with her hands in the warm water. A bright yellow moon shone overhead. She sadly recalled how the overweight man held her tender hand in his fat ones and how he looked at her with his unpleasant, lustful gaze. The main character stood aside, watching the girl. He thought again. After all, if she continues to wash her hands in this water with such diligence, she will simply erase all her skin. And judging by the stories of that gentleman, what happened to her there is very easy to imagine. He became a little sad, hanging his head down. After all, an orphan girl with a sad life experience became a servant of a powerful landowner. She couldn't express her anger, so she could only let her master's hands roam over her skin. Siri asked if the owner was okay. To which the boy replied that everything is fine. It's just a flight of fancy. He continued to fantasize while scratching the back of his head. Then he leaned against a thick tree trunk. And I asked the system if it selects missions. And if this is so, then why did you choose him? He stood there thoughtfully, crossing his arms and looking intently at the siren bug. He couldn't understand why the system couldn't just tell him. Why is Siri silent? To which the system finally responded, explaining that the main character was waiting so hard for something at that moment. He looked out the window with a blank expression on his face, so the system could not understand what Alan was thinking about. What exactly does he want? That's why I chose him. After which she explained that she was now on a mission, so she did not expect any more comments from the boy. After which the boy thought again, deciding that the problem was not in the system after all. And that means in himself, the guy continued to think. The alarm bug did not live to tell the main character anything else. And the boy, in turn, with his head down, realized long ago that by asking the system directly, he would obviously achieve nothing. After that, Alan started thinking about Monica, that everything with her is relatively clear. Atomic bomb, do the locals like spicy food? Since he has some system restrictions, then she probably has the same ones. Although the mentor accidentally hinted at her true identity several times, why the boy was interested, he thought that he still didn't know where she came from, from what era. There was nothing that could give him any clue. The system turned to the main character, asking why they were following this girl if she was already leaving. To which the boy smiled at the bug and replied that he just wanted to look around. The system was very surprised. Siri wondered what the boy was up to. Alan, in turn, went as planned to pick up the girl. After all, they have a mission to protect, but there is not a word about who will attack. Therefore, all that remains is to suspect everyone. Siri didn't know whether he was ruling out this girl as a suspect or vice versa. 